welcome to the throne room. This is episode 10 of the video game podcast that may forever change your fealty. I'm your host with the absolute most, David K.L. Ingle, and I am joined by another noble, number 10 loving Final Fantasy enthusiast, Andre Borges Brown. Hello, everyone. Touchdown! Yes. Big, big lover of the number 10. We love 10. Especially when it comes to Final Fantasy. We're, big t- we're 10 fans around here. And, uh, you know, today we are joined once again by Ken Doman. And sorry about the audio uh, last time, folks. I know a few of you mentioned the quality and we fixed that issue. So don't you worry about it. We're coming through with some crystal clear, beautiful audio this week. Isn't that right, Ken? I fixed. Yep, I got it down. (laughs) So hopefully... Sounds crystal clear for everybody. Sounds beautiful to me. Sound beautiful to you, all right? It does. It does. All right. All right. So, Ken, that being said, what's new in your life, man? What's uh, you got anything crazy, non gaming related, or uh, non gaming related? Yeah. Okay. Non gaming related. No, I'm uh, I'm starting a 75 day health challenge. I'm trying to like lose some weight, work out. So I've done it for almost a week. That's cool. Yeah. Hard as hell, but (laughs) it's it's worth it. So I'm like, yep. I'm on the plan. I'm sticking to it. So, yeah, that's awesome, it's, man. It's good. Yeah, I figure it's it's about time. I've been... Well, honestly, you know, I just the other day, I think it was two nights ago, I watched this uh, documentary on Netflix called The Game Changers, and uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but it is a very convincing show about plant based diets. Uh, very convincing, and the, the the evidence is staggering to to why humans shouldn't be eating meat. You make your own decisions. I'm not saying I'll never eat a steak again in my life, but uh, it's got me questioning some things and wondering uh, if I should try it for a month just to see how I feel. But yeah, ch- if you're, I mean, 75 day health challenge, that's awesome. I need to do something like yeah. that too. But man, if this is any, it, like, really watch that show, The Game Changers. It, yeah, the game, it, yeah, game Changers. It yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, check I'm, that out. I'm, I'm actually uh, very glad that you told me about that because now I can avoid it at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> when, when, I, when I scroll through Netflix, and if I see something interesting, I sometimes, you know, you click on it, even if you're not looking yeah, for it. Of course. And now I can avoid it because <laughs> damn that. No, man, really. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't force anything down your throat. It's not crazy. It's actually very, yeah, it's very entertaining and informative. So, I mean, yeah. like do what you want. If you never want to yeah. watch it, go ahead. Don't watch yeah. it. But, no, but I think you said it's very, it's, it, it has you <clears throat> questioning stuff. Yeah, I don't want to be in that position. But I, like I said, I don't know that I'd never eat meat again. So it's not oh, I know you that are. might have. No. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do know that. Okay. So it's not yeah. that much of questioning, but it is interesting to ponder. And that's all I'm saying. I think everyone can benefit from watching it just because of the entertainment value. It was entertaining, yeah. you know, yeah. to watch. So anyway, that being yeah. said, Ken, yeah. what do you, okay, what, what else you got? What am I playing? I, I, I said yeah, last time I was playing Ra- Ra- <laughs> Ratchet and Clay. <laughs> Uh, the uh, remake of Ratchet and Clank, like 2015, 2016 version. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, 2016. I uh, played that on, on PS5, and it's a great game. And I remember getting through it. I got all the way to the boss, and I was like, I was just getting stuck. I'm like, I didn't hardly die throughout the whole game. And the final boss, I was like having trouble. And the game just decided to like give it to me. It felt bad for me or something. I, was, I think I was on like my eighth or ninth try. And I was starting to get the patterns down, and I kept running out of ammo. So I was like really conserving ammo, trying to get it right. I get the bus down to 50%. I hit him, and it rolls credits. It was like, boop. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, hey, I guess I won. Wait, what? <laughs> like, oh, you yeah. only had to take a boss to 50% of his life points, and he's like, fuck it, I give up. And I, I recorded know, it. Here that's, go. Uh, that's interesting. I got to yeah. see that. Because, uh... <laughs> I, I recorded it. It's uh yeah. I'll, I can upload it. I'll put it on my YouTube channel, and you can I, check it out. I beat the game. Yeah, I remember it, and I had a different experience. Well, I, <laughs> right. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't have nearly as much trouble with the boss. I think. Boss? I think it would probably be to my second or third try, but like, yeah, yeah I had to like take oh. his health down to zero. <laughs> yeah, and well, my first try, I got him down to like is under ten percent, and then I don't know. I just wasn't getting the patterns right and stuff, and then. The, so the you, last... you know this is BS yeah. because you've, right. you've done better before. And they were, yeah. like, they were like, man, right. this is taking too long, man. Look, you won. Right. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, hey, just give it to him. He, yeah, he's good. He earned it somewhere or another, yeah. yeah. Some form right. of 
but I was having a really good run. I was still at like 90% health. I was like, I was ready to finish him off. And that, that, would, no. that would make me so mad. I'm sure it made you mad. Cause like, it's kind of thick. I'm like, I felt like I didn't earn it. I was like, man, I don't no, want well, that trophy. Well, take, to, take be fair, to be fair, you definitely did not earn it. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Based no. on what you're saying. I'm, I don't no, know. I don't know because the game, the game is telling him that he did, right? You would have. You so you know what I think it. happened? You earned it. Oh, I yeah, think yeah. he was kicking oh, his butt so hard, so hardcore, yeah. better than any Ratchet and Clank person ever. Like he was just the best Ratchet that the game ever saw, and the analytics yeah. of it all were just like, you know what? I fuck it. You're the you're the best, man. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm out. You know. The game quit. The game, right. yeah. the game rage. Damn, Ken! I didn't know that you were that good at video games. <laughs> I'm scared now. Don't don't ever play out. a game with me, man. I'm afraid a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The game's weird. The controller across the screen. It's like I only got this guy to ninety percent. No. Yeah. Health. Come on. I'm 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 at half health. He's got all this ammo now. He's playing so much better. You know what? I quit. The game was like, all right. I guess yeah. you win. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I, yeah, I was ticked. So like, I thought about going into New Game Plus. I'm like, you know, know what? I'm deleting the game. I just went in and I deleted it off the hard drive. I'm like, got like a week left till the new one. I was like, I'll just wait that out. So call on the yeah. day. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. But uh, also been playing Destiny too. Uh, Vault of Glass. Uh, actually beat that earlier today. So uh, still a good raid. I, my opinions on it change a little bit. I think a lot of people have like rose tinted glasses because it was the first raid, and a lot of people say, "Oh, that's the best one ever," and I enjoyed it. But I'm like, I don't think it's the best one. Yeah. I think there's better ones, but it's still fun. It was a good time, but I did not get my Fate Bringer and I did not get a Vex Myth class, so I struck out on both those. <laughs> you know what, Ken? I didn't get those either, man. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might have had better chances if I was playing it, but I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry to hear. Sorry to hear that, man. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. I remember the Destiny Two grind. I remember the weapons. I remember wanting stuff, yeah. and I know how it is. So, damn, man. Uh, sorry. What about you? Yep. What about you, Andre? What's new? What's going on this week? Uh, crazy? Nothing much, you know. Sixers watching them. You know, just saw them lose game one, but other than that, doing pretty good. Uh, gonna be a long series we're gonna win it in six sixes and six uh let's see game wise uh you know as i said before i did beat returnal you know a little flex there but you know i just kind of i'm just kind of like uh i've been a holding pattern like i don't want to start a game that's going to last me longer than a week so i'm just kind of you know, I'm playing games. I, I usually play sports games or something. You know, I can't play DBFZ because David doesn't have a freaking PS4. Uh, but, you know, yeah. uh, you know, just bring uh, it up again. Let's not stop bringing it up. Let's bring attention. That's the only way we're going to get change, Andre, is if we keep yeah. fucking saying it. Get David a P Ken, too, I think. Yeah, get yeah, David yeah. and Ken a PS5. Yeah, we need a March. Uh, David, yeah, mm. Ken, you don't have a PS5? You, you know what, Andre? I'm sorry. You got I'm a controller. Yeah, I got a PS5. Yep, it's right there. Yeah, You've got, got a PS5? Yeah. There yeah. Right in the corner. Yeah, oh my goodness yeah. me. You piece yeah. of shit. I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought you didn't. I thought we were in the same class. We no, are man. not, Ken. I, I'm just, you have I'm PS5s just gonna help you and you beat Ratchet and Clank bosses better than anyone. You know what? You just... Andre, I'm going to say it. I hope I'm not shunned and I hope I am not uh, exhumed oh. out of existence. But maybe... I like it. Maybe we need to kill a couple PS5s and I might get one. You know? What? What? Maybe. Yeah, we, we need to get rid of them. Yep. And then they'll be like, you know what? This is unheard of. This is injustice. We need more PS5s. And they'll, they'll make more. Oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hard to find them to kill them though, so we're yeah. back at the square. You're right. This uh, this is creating a, a, a degenerative type of issue. I mean, I'm not killing mine. If anyone would like to donate their PS5 to David, not to use, but to be sacrificed, so that more will be produced. I think then please do so. Contact us. Uh, I will not be doing that. I don't believe that's how it would I go think, down. I think you guys should both get rid of your ps5s and and then we can all be in the same boat here and then yeah, nobody has one and then yeah. now they really 
need to give us one. But see, there's two boats, and there's two people in one boat and one person in the other boat. I think we should all be in the same boat, but I just don't think it's like... It's not a boat you want to be in, right? Just say it. it. Just say it. it, I don't think it makes... You don't want to be in the no PS5 boat. Logistical sense. All right. For two people to leave one boat and go to the other boat when one person could just leave that boat and go to this boat, you know? Uh, hashtag this boat. This hashtag boat has PS5. hashtag kill better. the PS5. Hashtag yeah. kill it. Nobody needs it until everyone can have it. All right? Zero people use that hashtag. Nobody's yeah. getting it. All um, right. So, yeah, I just kind of like, I, I don't want to start a new grand adventure um, because Ratchet and Clay's coming and I'm going to buy that day one. I am, uh, you know what? I am too. I was gonna get Bio Mutant, and then you know I looked at I looked at it more, and I was like, mm, nah. Yeah, dude. I, like I like I mentioned before, real quick. Uh, I'm not a big fan of THQ Nordic. You know, I, yeah. I, I I don't. I know they're a smaller team, and that's great. I'm glad they're doing what they want to do. But even if I had a smaller team, I think I would make something more polished. I would take the time. I don't know. All yeah. of their games to me seem to to lack. A layer of polish that they really need to be something special. The idea was great. Biomutant, the idea, everyone wanted that. They wanted little rodent guys that they could create and make look like the way they want to with all the powers and strength and whatever they wanted to and go explore this cool world of uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as a little rat thing. But it's not enough for me. I, you know, I, This is a game I would have bought if I had nothing else to play right now. Um, and you know, speaking about having a PS5, I have plenty of not to play right now. But I, I yeah. still have stuff to. I have a backlog I'm working on. So, uh, that being said, you know, it just I, I waited and I've been reading stuff and looking at stuff. You know, I, I saw I can't remember who I don't know who it was, but someone commented, "What happened when uh, we all just played games because they were fun?" And he has a point. Like, just play a game because it's fun, right? Well, well, but now we have more games. Yeah, there's there more to more choose. Games. There's more to <laughs> choose from. We don't just have to play a game because it's the only fun game to play right now. Yeah. You know, and there's positive things I'm hearing about Biomutant, but there's a lot of uh, of negative I'm hearing as well. And it looks great. It looks fun in its own right. Uh, I'll it's get it on sale. Yet. Yeah, you know, and, when they patched and it's gonna it. get better. Yeah, when they when they've added things, they patched it. They've whatever. I'll get it on sale. And if you didn't want that to happen, THQ Nordic, you should have given people a game that they loved, and then they decided to pay seventy full price for it. So that's right. your damn fault. THQ oh, it's Nordic. like it's like Cyberpunk, which I still haven't bought that game. I want it. I think it looks awesome. But I feel like oh, it's not ready. Oh, you I bought that day one, bro. I'm already yeah. done with that game, dog. I, yeah. You know what? And I played it on a PS4 base PS4, bro, and I love really? it. Really? No. Really? No. I yeah, funny say, story. I've... I bought this game <laughs> on my uh, PS4 Pro, uh, yeah. day one launch, all right? And I tried my hardest to play it in that space. And I am not a person that really complains if it funds and it looks good. If, if it's fun, it looks good enough. I'm not going to complain about a dip in an FPS no. or uh, certain things loading into. I'm not a big complainer. It was unfucking playable, man, on right. my PS4 Pro. I tried and I tried and I tried. I played yeah. it day after day and I kept giving it a chance. Finally, you know, P- uh, PlayStation announced, hey, anyone who wants to, you can uh, get a, a refund, no questions asked. We're refunding the shit. Jeez. And I said, yeah, you know what? Can't get it. I said, you know what? Sure. And th- I have a high-end gaming PC. So you know what I did? I bought it on PC the same day as I hit the refund button. And I, it's been great. It's been great okay. on PC. So yeah. no no issues on PC at all. But Even uh, though it doesn't have the, the next-gen <laughs> patch yet, the fabled next-gen no. patch, no. I, I played it day one on the PS5. Which is really just like it's the PS4 version, but on the PS5, there's right. no extra stuff given to it, and it's been fine. It, mm-hmm. It's had problems. It has like that Bethesda jank, except different. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, I know what you're talking about people. Yeah. People were like, people were saying like, ah, oh, The Witcher Three was like that when it came out, and I was like, no, oh, the hell it wasn't. <laughs> like, not, yeah, I don't know where you played it. Cyberpunk but, like, not is not PS4. as. Cyberpunk is not as bad as people are making it out to be on the consoles and play platform that it was meant to it, that it was made to be on. Someone said, yeah. "Hey, we need this. I don't give a fuck. I need this to be on the PS4 like now." 
I need and it to be on this fucking Xbox, Xbox yeah. 360 right yeah. now, and you're gonna make it happen. And you know what? What are you gonna do? Because you, money. As a game studio, you, you you just have to. They're paying the bills, so you know you yeah. have to listen to them. You know, it's not entirely. Uh, it's not definitely not the developers' fault. It's not the artists' fault. Everyone put their heart and soul into this game that we're actually making it. I get that, you know. I, 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 I give them credit for it working on PC and mostly working on PS5 and Xbox yeah. Series yeah. X. But CD Projekt Red is the publisher. They're, they are the developer. They run themselves. They decided to put it on PS4 and Xbox 360. And not just the freaking uh, Xbox One... Not 360, I'm sorry. Not just the Xbox One X. Not just the PS4 Pro. But the PS4, the base PS4, and the Xbox 360. So that that yeah. unplayable broken mess you played, David, you played it on a PS4 Pro. Yeah. <laughs> right? Not base. Which is right. already better yeah. than the PS4, which in and of itself is already better than the original yeah. Xbox One. There's some people out there trying to play this game on an Xbox One, and it is not happening it is not happening so and they made that decision they made it for money they got some money they did well but like yeah. they deserve you know they, they they deserve credit for making a good game and credit for keep putting their heart their nose to the grindstone or whatever and keep working at it but they deserve blame too they deserve blame yeah. because it was their decision it wasn't right. like but it wasn't the hard, like the hard a, part you're saying right now. having ea meddle with them this is cd project red's decision Right. And I, right, I don't disagree with you, but saying CD Projekt Red as a whole is a hard pill to swallow because it wasn't everyone. And I'm sure 90, 95% of that company were like, this is a bad fucking idea. No, I don't want to do this. Don't make us right. do this, right? Well, you know? I wonder, like, somebody was playing it on a base PS4. Somebody, I mean... No, I don't know about that, too. man. I don't but know just about like, that. hey, oh, yeah. it compiled, okay. Yeah. It works? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean they play they place yeah. tested it. They talked about this is the what like people were like when it was delayed, people were like, Oh, why is it being delayed? And they and they talked about like we have to um make this for like nine different platforms or eleven different platforms. Yeah. And people right. were rolling their eyes and they were like, Oh, you're just making excuses and I'm like, I don't know, man. They they they're making this for you know Making games for PC is already hard. Enough. I don't know why so PCs out there. I don't They're know why they didn't decide. PS5, PS4, I don't know why they didn't bro. decide to put this game on Game Boy Advance, bro. They put like, this shit on Stadia, bro. <laughs> they put this, they yeah. put this game on Stadia. Like they, yeah. like it, they really, they, they made it for all these games and they play tested it. And I know, yeah. I know when they released, they were like, "Look, uh, this isn't the best." You know how I know well, that they know. knew it wasn't the best on PS4 know. and Xbox 360 because. Every preview and every video that came out was only yeah, next they didn't gen. show it. Yeah, and and the reviewers, the the previewers were only oh, given PC. next yep. gen yep. and PC. Yeah. That's true. Um, uh, gameplay. They were only given next gen codes. The yeah. only time people got to talk about and play at that time, current gen PS4, Xbox One, was when the game came out. So that's right. how I knew that they were like, yeah, we got to know. Well, it reminds me of No Man's Sky a lot because I bought that game at launch. I was me too. really excited for No Man's Sky. Me too. And I played it and I was like, oh, it was all right. I was like, maybe I'll come back to it. And then they kept making it better. And like even recently, they have a patch that like upgrades like the graphics on everything. The you whole can game fly a better. flying creature now. No, they keep making that game yeah. better. But it's hey, amazing. No yeah. Skies in uh, Cyberpunk had opposite problems. Cyberpunk is yeah. interesting and fun, and the <laughs> gameplay was awesome, and the story is right. awesome, and the gunplay is awesome, and the RPG parts are awesome, and the the, the immersion, the Night City, um, it just doesn't work. For like most of the platforms it's released on, it's just like is broken and unplayable. It's Whereas like um, in there, just yeah, <laughs> No Man's Sky is actually very impressive. Uh, oh, even yeah. on like normal PS4, this is very impressive. Like just going to planets, everything works, everything loads the way it should. It might not look as crisp or as clear as you know some of the trailers or whatever, but you know it, everything works. It's just boring as shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just it's just like what. Are, after you like go to like your third or fourth planet, you're like, oh, what? What actually am I doing? 
Yeah, or well, like <laughs> you can build your own base out and do all this stuff now. There's a lot more to do yeah. now, though. I don't know yeah. if you've checked it out in a while, yeah. Andre. There's no, a lot to yeah. do now. I have, yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. checked it out together. Okay. We checked it out together. It, when it's I, th- I think their big, their big yeah. thing was caught. I think I we look. I, I think when the the moment you're speaking about Henri was like a year ago, and they've still come out with a shitload. I know, of more I know, stuff. I know. Yeah, yeah they right. keep coming out. Yeah. But they haven't yeah, touched yet. They came out with multiplayer, and, and we played it again. Right. And I think right. you what you mean, Ken, is that it reminds you of uh, No Man's Sky because you hope that they are going right. to follow the same suit. Like, I don't know that they will. There. Yeah, I don't know well, that they will. Yeah, so, I, I, I'm in, in some yeah. ways, I, they need to. They need to. Um, that's that's kind of a that's kind of a good question, David. Because you said you don't think they will. Like all they have to do is is make it run. Yeah. Like No Man's yeah. Sky, they had to add content. They had to add the ability to have multiplayer. They had to add base building. They had to add all this stuff. They added a ton of stuff just last year. And like you yeah. said, David, they since then they've put a whole bunch of other stuff in it. All right. That sounds so easy, of, right? Which way it sounds hard. It sounds harder. Than just like, hey, CD Projekt Red, make this thing run on the on the systems you released yeah. it for, and right. that it's they're like, never going to do podcast. that, dude. They yeah. are not. It is still removed completely from the PlayStation Store, and right. I don't know that it will ever come back to the PlayStation Store. And I don't know that they're going to spend. They're not going, dude. They're not going to spend the time to make that shit run on a PS4. They're not. They've been trying. They're not going to. They've been they trying. have not succeeded. Uh, they I will give grant up. you that. They should give but up. But they there have been a whole bunch of patches. It's yeah. probably better than yo, it man. Was. It's like they were like, "Hey, you want this to run on a PS4? Why not on a Sega Genesis, bro? Like, come on, we can do that. Like, easy. If you release it on a Sega Genesis, then it should run on a Sega Genesis. All right. Mm-hmm. If you didn't want it to run on a PS4 or an Xbox, uh. One. All right, this is getting way too far out of the hand. And, out of hand. and this ain't even a round table. We need to stop I talking know. about cyberpunk right <laughs> yeah, now. It's cyberpunk. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cyberpunk, cyberpunk, you're gone as quick as you came, all right? Twice yeah. now. Bye, <laughs> cyberpunk. Yeah, real quick, you know what the funny part is? <laughs> what? None of us are playing cyberpunk right now. No, man. Oh, cyberpunk a, came out of nowhere to hijack the conversation. Yeah. I love Cyberpunk. Uh, Cyberpunk's great. Yeah, no and you know, my prediction, no my prediction of it becoming like a Grand Theft Auto style multiplayer game, I still hope that comes true because it is ripe and perfect for that. If that was yeah. made as uh, GTA Online with Cyberpunk, man, I want that. Give that to me. I'll play it. Anyway, get out of here. What else? Who's fuck, whose turn was it anyway? Sure. I don't care anymore. No, it wasn't because I would have said this shit and Cyberpunk wouldn't have come up. But anyway, it is now my turn. Uh, new in life. Uh, this was my first week back in the office. It's cool. A, a big change. It's different, you know, but still uh, I like the people I work with. And that's the most important part. So um, here's to corporate. Cheers. That being said, I've been playing some. I, you know, I, I've been missing Dead Space. I've been missing Dead Space Ooh. a lot. I went and bought uh, Dead Space 3 just for the, uh, uh, it's not the best Dead Space, but not the worst. Well, it is the worst, but none of them are bad. So, um, uh, but I I wanted the aesthetic and the, just, I wanted to hang out with a friend and play Dead Space. So I've been playing that a little bit on the side with my brother, um, just to, just to get the Dead Space aesthetic and and sound. And and I, man, I I really, uh, I'm so sad, you know. That EA did to Visceral, what whoever is probably going to do to CD Projekt Red. So hopefully that doesn't fucking happen. But uh, oh, if you didn't know, Andre, Visceral is gone. They're kaputs. Oh, I know. Okay, you know. I know. I remember the Star Wars game that I wanted. Yeah, I wanted Visceral. that too. Amy Henning was coming on. Yeah. Making something That's special. Have- with my boys from Visceral. What's up? Yeah, did they absorb them into like another team? No, they just deleted they just them, bro. They hit Alt F four. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> their asses up. They said wow. you didn't give us enough money for the game we made you change, so uh, you're gonna pay. And then they just absolved the studio altogether. It's very unfortunate. Um, but my boy, uh, the director of Dead Space, I can't remember his name. God man. I'm terrible. I watched all of his interviews. He's awesome. Uh, he is working on uh, this game called The Callisto Protocol now. And uh, it's supposedly set in the PUBG universe, whatever. I think they're trying to make a universe for PUBG is what it really means. Uh, But uh, it looks a lot like Dead Space. So 
uh, I'm excited to see that, and uh, hopefully that comes to fruition, because Dead Space was a fucking gem. That was a gem of a game. The three of them, they were all great in their own right. Uh, anyway, I've uh, been playing that, and some Hunt Showdown! Back to some Hunt. That's a fun multiplayer game to play. Don't know, have you guys, you guys know anything about Hunt Showdown? No, what is it? Yeah, yeah what's it what's it's about? Question. It's kind of like a battle royale. Well, no, because you don't find weapons. Okay, so you start. It's a three-player teams, and you go into a map, and you guys have to. There's usually two bosses on the map, and you are teams of like I think maybe four of three or more. So at least four teams of three, and you all have to find and hunt these demons, these bosses, and kill them and collect the bounties and extract before um, somebody kills you or, and steals it. or So you're finding these clues throughout the map. You're going to different locations on it. It's a pretty big map. And there's zombies and other things that you can fight along the way. And you don't want to make too much noise because other players are here where the gunshots are coming from. And then you can set crows off. That'll let people know where you're at and ducks and other things. So you need to be really aware of your environment and uh, be playing very smartly with your team and get these clues, find the boss, kill the boss, then kill any opposition that's trying to kill you and get the fuck out of there or run from that. You know, it, man, it's really, it's a lot of fun. It's really great. And I wish I could play uh, with you guys for sure. But um, you, you play it on PC? I do. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking it yeah. up. Yeah, it's on sure, Steam. You can get the bu the the bundle. Legendary edition is 25 bucks. It's pretty cheap. It's on sale right now. I think. Yeah. It's yeah. A lot of fun. It's fun. We're playing it. If you want to pick it up and play it with us, man, that'd be awesome. We'd love to. Yeah, definitely love to play some with you. It's a fun game. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's a lot of fun. So, uh, been playing that. That's about it. So anyway, what an achievement, right? What an achievement. Uh, what an absolute blessing to get to our 10th episode without being shunned out of existence, without being banned from the internet, right? And for that, our 10th episode needs something 10 to celebrate it. So this week is 10 games that deserve a 10 out of 10. Games that we felt were so amazing, it was an absolute sin not to give them a perfect score. So we are just going to go ahead and fix that right now, and we're going to set the record straight, all right? Speaking of Dead Space, Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 deserves a 10 out of 10. Now, I love Dead Space. I played the first one. It rocked my world. Dead Space 1. And then 2 came out. And 2 was basically Dead Space 1 perfected. They had taken this game and they added more. They fixed things that they needed to. It was the Dead Space experience that they wanted to give to people. And God, did I love it. There was new weapons, new ways to destroy necromorphs, um, new settings, eerie, uh, but also not as dark. There were some brighter settings too. I mean, yeah, you go into a kindergarten, bro. You walk right into a kindergarten. And it's got some colorful drawings and blocks and things and lockers for the kids to put their little kitty Thomas the Train backpacks in, you know. And then all of a sudden a baby comes out and he's got three tentacles and he's trying to eat you. And then you kill him. You kill that baby. There was a lot of controversy on that if I remember correctly. People were, people were a little mad about killing babies, but I thought... It made a lot of sense to me. There's going to be like zombie babies, right? That baby had it come. It was a zombie baby. It was him or you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah. So, don't feel bad, yeah, David. I don't. So, uh, yeah. Dead Space 2, I think, uh, I can't remember what it got, something like 80 or 90. It was a must play. People say you must play this game. And, man, I, it, for me, uh, n no questions asked. That game is a 10 out of fucking 10 for me. What do you guys think? So, even even though the team is gone, do you think this game could have like a remaster or something? I don't think. EA? Well, EA owns the rights now, right? So they have the yeah. opportunity to. Uh, I don't think it'll ever be what it was. I don't think the bright minds that were behind, the amazing, beautiful minds that were behind Dead Space, and maybe there's newer uh, ones that loved it that come out of it, like me. I would, man, if if EA, if EA said, "Hey, we're working on a Dead Space Four title, and we need people to like revive this shit. We need talent. We need uh, imagination." In a heartbeat, I'd, I'm a 3D artist. If you didn't know, I work, you know, for for uh, for games and such. And I would be like, "Fuck, get me on that project right now. I will, I will work on Dead Space Four, and I will help you make it." But I, I you know, then I don't like know. Said, the 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 excitement for Dead Space fans is in that new game, Callisto um, Protocol. And yeah, he's working Callisto on it. Protocol. 
Yeah, yeah, so. he's he, they're working on this, and and it looks it looks like a, a, a spiritual successor. It's not Dead Space, but it looks like a a, a, a a spiritual successor to it. And the guy, the brilliant mind behind it, and I'm sure he brought people that worked with him on Dead Space to work on it too. They're gonna make something awesome. But Dead Space um, as the IP itself, man, I can't tell you that it'll ever come back. And if it does, it probably won't come back right. You know, EA doesn't seem to care about um, the yeah. IPs that they they had a chance, and we just spoke about it. You know, earlier, Visceral absconded. It, their EA absconded Visceral, and and right when they were working on a amazing what Uncharted Four style uh, Star Wars yeah, game, I believe uh, it was called Project Ragtag. Yeah, that's it. Yep, yep. Ragtag. That'd Man. be a nice, you know, a, I'd have a, killed for that. Very game. nice game. Visceral, yeah, I, I think. My boys at Visceral, Amy making Henning a Star Wars right. game, Best Uncharted Four to... style with Amy Henning. Yeah. So. I don't know. So yeah, yeah. I think I've answered that the best I can. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't know that it ever will, and I don't know that it ever should with the hands that it's in right now. Unfortunately to say, but I would yeah. love it to. The IP is amazing, man. The art, the aesthetic, everything about the man, just the idea of the markers and yeah. I, the story is rich. It's it's that is a special IP, a very special IP that just got fed the wrong fucking dinner, you know? Like Well yeah, that's yes, what we thought. I never actually played any of the Dead Space, as you know. Um but it is it, it is remarkable. We might see some more, but it's it's remarkable how much uh sequels in video games are there's such a high hit rate when like a when a game is good or great the sequel in a video game is usually better and it's really not the case in other forms that that is always the case yeah. like the second album the second movie yeah. in the series that's not really always the case unless um, it's fast and the furious then they just keep making it. <laughs> yeah i mean the oh, they'll get to 10 those. soon right are they at <laughs> 10? they going, might uh, be at nine. 10 right now they're, they're at 9 Okay, it's coming out. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, <laughs> it is. It is. Impre- yeah, yeah. You thought you were joking. They will get the ten. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. It is impressive in games how like the second game in a sequel is usually actually yeah. just the first one, but much better. Yeah. You know. Well, well, look at Resident Evil. They just had eight, I and mean, that's amazing. They made eight plus like all the yeah. different side ones. Oh, they're There's getting like, the ten. If Final Fantasy made it oh, to yeah. ten, Resident Evil's next on the list. Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. well, like Death they could have been. They just don't have ten. Main line, yeah. You're, I mean, yeah, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah. I do, I do. You. But that could have been. But they, you know, Final people. Fantasy has more than yeah. fifteen. Then they got like fucking. Like they, de- they definitely have made twenty. They have, oh, they have at least. I mean, oh. yeah. I anyway. can name five. I can name five non-numbered. Next Final up, Fantasy who's Fantasy. Right next? Who's next? Andre, what's yours? Andre, we'll talk uh, all night if we don't keep this moving. Yeah. Uh man, I'm I'm gonna go with the Last of Us Part Two to start Ooh. off. I'm just gonna start mm. off with a banger. All right. Mm. Uh, so the Last of Us is a ten out of ten, and I could name five other ten out of ten games that I didn't put on my. Now, list does that score have topic. ten out of ten for sure? Like Last of Us Part One, it's got a perfect score. Oh, I mean, people have given it a perfect score. You know, yeah. the Metacritic is probably around ninety six or something. Yeah, there's always but you know it. It, it got a it got a whole bunch of ten out of tens. It sort of did, did part two, um, but for me, The Last of Us Part Two is also a ten out of ten. The gameplay of The Last of Us Part Two. We were talking about stealth games uh, a couple of weeks back, and The Last of Us Part Two is one of the best stealth games out there. It really is. Like Ellie is a freaking predator, man. She's like Ice Cube. She's the predator. Um, it is. Uh, the way you interact with your environment, the way you interact with characters is amazing. It's some of the best gameplay I've ever played in my entire life. The story is amazing. It is not better, in my opinion, than uh, the first game, because the first game has like the best ending I've ever seen. A simple, easy to remember story, but very fun. Uh, but like, it know. does take some very interesting risks that they didn't have to take. They didn't have to take the risk that they took with the story yeah. to, to sell what they did and to make a um, a 10 out of 10 game, but they did, and I respect Neil Druckmann and Naughty Dog for that. Naughty Dog, in my opinion, pound for pound, the best developer in the industry. It has been for quite some time. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, everything. Sound, story, gameplay. You Bro, know, you know everything perfect about that game. I give it a ten out of ten. I don't know, man. There's no such thing as like a perfect, perfect game, but I'll give it a ten. You know, you know. There's a lot of I've heard a lot of talk about both of them. I've played both of them extensively. Love them both. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they say the same thing you did. The first game is the best. I don't. I don't agree, and I don't know why. I loved the second game, and for some reason, the story just struck me harder. Than the first one did. Now I lo- now I'm not gonna. I adored the first game, loved it. The story was amazing, but just yeah. to me, the complexity of the characters, um, everything that culminated it from the first game to now, it's man. I thought to me, the Lu two was better than the first in every way, and I know I mean, that's not I, a popular opinion, but it, it, a lot of people feel that way. I think it's better in every way except story, except but I story. love The Last of Us Part 2 story. Yeah. The, the Last of Us Part 2 story for me would get like a 9.5. That's how much I love yeah. it. I mean, I just think that the that the the ending to The Last of Us was cleaner. Like, I think the ending can do a lot in the story. Like, if if anyone watches wrestling, I think that like the finish to a match can make a good match great and i think that the finish to a game the ending Same to a way. game especially since games don't usually do the worst part of a game honestly is usually the ending like a lot of games don't know how to end they don't know what boss type to use they don't know whether to go old school whether to do what you're you've been doing all game or make the boss like a super boss. like they don't know what to do and the last was part one ended perfectly last was part two ended amazingly perfectly for me but and you know, so we're sp- we're splitting here hairs here, but there was a there was a, a a gap between the gameplay, and I like the gameplay of The Last of Us, but a lot of people tolerated the gameplay of The Last of Us. You I don't do it. that with The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, yeah the gameplay sure. of Last of Us Part Two is amazing. So if you like the story, you know you like you like seeing these these performances, and then you also like the gameplay, how you can attack everything in different ways and how you interact with the enemies and how you know we we're, we're gonna say this word again but how visceral the the combat is how um brutal it is how violent it is how how the gameplay the violence of the gameplay feeds into the narrative yeah, yeah. it's not just like gore for gore's sake you feel the weight on ellie's shoulders whenever she has to you know kill a bunch of people because they wronged her like you you feel her hate and her anger and i think that you know i think that's why neil had to make a whole bunch of people mad because he wanted people to feel ellie's anger and i know you felt her anger as you went through the game David, so I, I did i did feel her anger and i felt a lot of things and you know what i'll tell you at the end of the first game i didn't really feel anything okay mm. and i yeah. i know a lot of people say that they felt happy or they were happy. I don't know. They felt stuff. I didn't feel shit. I was just like, oh, okay. Well, they're going to that place over there. They survived, I guess. And now that was the, sorry. So that's not the entire ending, right? Okay. So the actual ending of, um, the last spo- of spoiler alert, yeah. um, of, of what he went through to in his decision to save her rather than yeah. lose her. That was an emotional thing. I will... Uh, yeah. And that was part of the ending, right? The ver- yeah, the very so, end. The very he, end, though, I so was he like... Saves, he saves her, and at the very end, they're just trucking along. They're, they're and then he lies her. to her. And then she asks, hey, you know, is everything you told me true? Basically. And he's like, yeah, bitch. Yeah. And he's like... Yeah. Let's, get yeah. on that, let's get on that train. And she's like... She, she does not believe him, but she says... All right. You can you can tell she doesn't believe him, but she says, "Hey, look, if you say that's what happened, I'll believe you. I won't bring it up again." Yep. And he lies to her face. Yep. And, and then that, okay, and the game ends. Okay. And the game ends. So, that so part, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about it. That part people um, called him a villain. People I was very. Him. I didn't. Yeah, exactly. There was some controversy there, so I didn't really feel anything from that. I was like, okay. Yeah. I mean, would I have told her the truth? I don't fucking know. I'm not there. Because right? there's two questions, right? Would you have done what he did, which is murder everyone and save Ellie, your surrogate daughter? Um, it's, it's a hard and, question, right? No. And, you know, and the second question is, would you have lied to her? Yeah. So it's like, 
That that it, it, and I don't it, know. it raises a bunch of so questions. So it was powerful yeah. and I and I yeah. did I I really yeah. enjoyed the whole experience of Last of Us Part 1. But then Last of Us Part 2 happened. And yeah. that game, the ending of that game, bro, I've never felt something stronger in my entire life, I feel like, from a piece of media. That game it made me like I was like at a loss. I didn't understand how I should be feeling. I was confused. I was hurt. I was I the way that that the last of the ending of the last of us part two made me feel was so refreshing to me because nothing that I'd ever experienced had made me feel that way, and it was beautiful, man. So and that's why that's yeah. why I think that you can have different things in a game add up to your personal ten. Yeah. Because David, you would give the Last of Us Part One a ten, right? Yeah. And you'd give the Last of Us Part Two a ten. Hardcore. But they yeah. arrive at those tens in different ways for you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the same thing for me. That's all. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing for me. So what, what do you think yeah, about the, the Last of Us, Ken? Last of Us Part yeah. 2? Well, you can't go wrong with, with Naughty Dog. And um, I have not played Last of Us 2, but I played oh, okay. Last of Us. And uh, I played it fairly recently. I think it was like, <laughs> late last year. Uh, because I I had started it back on like PS3, and I didn't get that far. And I was like, I need to come back to this game. And I played it on the remaster. It was the first time I played it. Yep. And yeah, it's incredible. It, it was just it blew me away. It's, it's one of those games. Once you start really getting into it, I, like w- whenever I got off work, I just like, hey, I'm gonna play this for an hour. <laughs> I need to get yeah. see what happens. See what happens next. Get to that next yeah. part. And uh, played it like almost every day till I got through it. And and yeah, it was, it, was, it was shocking when you get to the end. What got me is like you're at the end, and it's like I thought you're just gonna pick her up and and try to run out with her. And it's like no, you're murdering all the people in the room. And I'm like, holy shit! Like they don't give you a choice. Like that's how the game. That's how the game ends. That's what you got to do. And yeah, that kind of struck me. I was like, oh wow. It's like yeah, they're taking a really dark turn with this. And, and yeah, it's a dark it, it's, game. It's yeah, an incredible oh, it's game to be that dark. That. Yeah depressing with 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 hope as well interstitched in oh but yeah. all game and still um and still surprise the viewer or the player with right. uh, with how dark it gets yeah so I've, it's a different kind of dark i'm logging into my account tonight i'm gonna go ahead and get last of us too you do it, it's a <laughs> must play really it is it is a must play game of all yeah. time yeah, yeah. This, this entire podcast has been worth it, if if nothing else. <laughs> but to get you to play it, yeah. Uh, to, like, to get you to play it, you will you will love Convince me. You'll love it. And I don't more. just mean this particular pack podcast, the episode, the tenth episode. I meant the creation of the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> we can convince oh, wow. one person oh, to buy the last of us part two. No, nice. no, really. Uh, yeah. It deserves every accolade and more that it got. That game is a marvel. It's amazing. So. Uh, definitely, and I, I do think it got it won the most game of the years. You know, when people oh, say I'm game sure. of the year, yeah. every outlet has the game of the year. Yeah. You know, I feel sure we'll have a game of the year one one day. But Ghost so, came you know, out too, and I yeah. felt like that was such a good game, and it had to go against yeah. Last of Us too. Yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> sorry, you're gonna win that one. <laughs> and I, you know, I platinumed both. Um, yeah. I loved Ghost of Tsushima. Still, the loot two is above it for me. They're both amazing, yeah. but the loot two yeah. is just an experience that is unlike any other in gaming that exists right now. It definitely yeah. needs to be played by everyone who considers their, themselves to be so, any semblance of a gamer. Yeah, you play that game. Yeah. Um, Ken, what is on your list? What's list, what you got? I'm going way, way back before they even reviewed games. Like you, you didn't even. I don't think they're even the way magazines before, reviewed before, games. Before, before, I'm going. Before. Going back to the uh, before Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Oh! oh Super man. Nintendo. <laughs> David, <laughs> yep. Okay, sorry. <laughs> You've got it, man, because that music is iconic, man. There's so much music in that. Like, there's the music from the church, the music in, like, yeah, all of the battles oh, and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, when you fight. Yeah, that's just great. You find the fairy fountain and stuff. It's like it's amazing. They they squeezed every little drop they could out of that Super Nintendo to to get that out of it. But why that's like my ten out of ten is because I feel like it's influenced so many other games. Like to this day, there's stuff that still influenced by it. it. And it's a game I can still replay. Like there's some old games I like. They're really hard to replay. They're like, man, it's so old. It feels so dated. You play that, I'm like, I just slip right back into it, and I'm still having a good time. 
and it's like the game mechanics are so solid like it's just and uh and it's a good story like you you start in and you get to see like your uncle gets murdered like right there at the beginning and it's like this is a kid's game you're like holy shit it's like stuff's going down and you're this little kid going on an adventure and it's like it it just strikes so many chords with me like the time it came out and stuff and i'm sure you know a lot of people say it's a great game but i picked that over probably any other zelda even breath of the wild which i was considering and i really like breath of the wild but i feel like this game was probably more influential and it's one that i could just easily go back and replay and i feel like it's a it's the right length too it's a long game but it's not too long a few hours a few hours if you 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 know it because uh you know we played it every weekend trying to beat it faster than we yeah. did uh, before. I right. think we, we could do it in a two, three hours span, knowing where everything right. was, having done it a few times. Right. But that probably equal out to maybe, what, six six hours, eight hours for, for yeah. an average new playthrough. Yeah, yep. I mean... Uh, I, another I thing, that. too, was the Dark World. I think this was one of the first games that actually... Yeah had an alternate uh, reality in it where things were different when you went to the other dimension, right? right. Uh, there, there weren't any games at the time that did anything like that. So, yeah, in A Link to the Past, you've got the green, blue water, uh, beautiful little world you're in, and then you can you eventually get an item. I can't it's like a mirror maybe, and it, it let you go to the dark world, and it was just an alternate version. The map was the same. You still went to the same areas, but... Aesthetically, things had changed. Some things had been burned down. There's skulls here. Different types of enemies. Man, uh, Link to the Past is by by definitely deserves ten out of ten. What did it get? It doesn't have a ten out of ten. What's well, the score? Well, do you know? It came out in like 1990. I mean, the only game magazine was like Nintendo Power, and like of course they gave it. Do I need to review that game yeah. right now? Yeah. Nintendo yeah. Power. Uh, <laughs> God. Yeah, they really. probably did give it a ten out of ten. Yeah, but there was a. Like the games media we have now, there weren't websites that rated games, so that game yeah, still holds up today. That yeah. the, the beautiful pixel art, uh, that's a game that doesn't Absolutely. feel dated. You can play that today, and if it came out today, you could review it and give it a ten out of ten. So if it doesn't have that, yeah, what are we I, even doing I, here? Who the fuck yeah. are we? Who's making <laughs> games anyway? Yeah, so that's my that's my first pick because it's it's so replayable the music is so good the story it's like every single part of that game like i don't see how they could do it any better like there's and to me that's a 10 out of 10 because it's like as good as it can possibly be you know for that time but even for today i think yeah still they they remade that right for no that's one of the few they've never gone and remade it Mm. um they made uh like the four swords or something which is in a similar vein and then they had a 3DS game. Seasons kind of spirit- and Ages? Are you talking seasons about Seasons and, and ages. ages? No, that was on Game Boy Color. And then on the, I think on the 3DS, there was one that was a, a spiritual successor to Link to the Past. But it's not, yeah, it's not a remake or anything. It's just a, it's a whole different game. So Seasons but- and Ages, they were on the Game Boy Color. They were m- most similar to the game of A Link to the Past for me. They were, they were um, in that style, yep. Yeah. And they were great. Yeah. Yeah, they were great yeah. in their own right, um, but uh, you know, a link to the pa- a link to the past is a masterpiece. Um, Seasons and ages are games they made to mimic a masterpiece. If that makes, yep. if that's the best way I can. Oh yeah, uh, you know, they were both made by uh, Capcom. That was okay, one. Wow. Of, Didn't know that. Nintendo, yeah, which is kind of weird that Nintendo let another company make their Very own. Interesting. Yeah. Next on my list, yo, and that's why they don't let people make movies anymore, and that's why they don't let <laughs> Capcom make games anymore, and that's why we're talking about the next one on my list, and it is. Drum roll, please. Bloodborne! 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 What an amazing Bloodborne. game! 10 out of 10 on that one. They knocked the ball out of the park. This was my first Souls like game. Blew my mind. After the first 10 hours of me playing this game, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Why am I... I don't die in video games. What the fuck? Right? (laughs) Literally, I was so fucking confused. And um, I took a step back, and something clicked. And then the game after that... I wasn't going to say that I was at the point of giving up. Because I don't give up at stuff. But it was at the verge of 
complete and utter frustration. I'm probably going to leave this for a week or two and play something else. And then something snapped, something clicked, and I got it. And then I crushed the game, loved the game. Now I understand how these games are played, and it made me want to play every other game that came before it, that was like it. Um, I thought the aesthetic for this game was perfect. The graphics were perfect, the audio was perfect, the gameplay was more than perfect. For a game that is like a, a Souls-like game, it has to be correct. It has to be perfect. It has to be, it's so technical that it's your fault that you're dying. This has to be a perfect game. So the fact that it doesn't have a perfect score is a little confusing to me. But I absolutely love this. This game is a gem. 10 out of 10 for me. What do you think? Nice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I we beat, well, you beat Bloodborne and then we beat Bloodborne again together. Hmm. Um, I like Bloodborne better than any of the other Dark Souls games. I think I like the fact when 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 it came out, I liked the fact that it was faster. I liked the fact that it was more, you know, aggressive as mm. opposed to you know, blocking and you know, sword and board Daring as they call it. Nonsense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a fun game to me. It has been surpassed since by Sekiro, but Bloodborne is in a in a very fun game. I can't wait for the sequel. I know they're gonna do it. You know, I I know it. I feel it. Feel it in my bones, but um, they it, it is a, it is a very good game. Um, it is the gameplay is amazing. You know, I'm sure there's a story there if you want to go and fetch your life or whatever and read about it. But like uh, the gameplay is where, where it's all about the the setting, the aesthetic, like you said, the like Victorian horror type. You know, ah, yeah, the gothic horror, the the nightmarish. Enemies, the Cthulhu I don't style stuff, nightmarish shit that's going on. Ken, yeah, do you, you know anything about this? You played this at all? Uh, Bot Bloodborne. It's in my library, <laughs> but it is in my uh, games to play still. Because it's like I, I knew how hard it was, and I was like, "Am I in the mood for punishment right now?" And I, I haven't been. <laughs> yeah. So when it strikes me, that's like, "Well, hey, if you I, want to, man, you keep that in the library." Um, when I yeah. never get my PS5. I'll run you through it. We'll get through it together. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll do That'll it. That probably never happens. So you got to write Sony and you got to say, Dave, I need David to be Bloodborne. Please get him yeah. what he needs. Yeah. No one, no <laughs> one takes care of Victor Amelia like Dave does. <laughs> yep. yeah. All right. Anyway, so Andre, what's what's next up for you, man? Uh, we're going to go with The Witcher 3. Yep. Um, the Witcher 3. That's uh, not a 10 uh, out of 10? It is. It is. Yeah. Oh, okay. For for a lot of sites, it's one okay. of the game of the years. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, the The Witcher Three, one of the best games released. Um, I believe it was released in twenty sixteen. Uh, just amazing, amazing RPG, amazing graphics, amazing gameplay, amazing story. You know, I I, I love it. Uh, just a complete jump in quality for CD Projekt Red. Put CD Projekt Red on the map, yeah. Um, to where you know people will buy a game like CD Projekt Red, mostly sight unseen, um, because of how good The Witcher Three was. I mean, The Witcher One and Two are good little PC games, and I think one of them, Assassins of Kings, I believe, came on on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. But really, The Witcher Three is basically their first AAA game, and it is an amazing game. It's like People argue between that and Skyrim, you know, and people love Skyrim. So, yeah, uh, it's definitely not an underrated game. I got 10s from a lot of places. Um, so, yeah, if we're thinking about an underrated game, I would have gave a different answer okay. because that is definitely not an well, underrated still, game. Well, still, Witcher 3 does deserve to be a 10 it out of 10. Deserves, so. It is a properly rated game. Man, you know what the, you know what the one thing I remember most and really that just just strikes me as such a beautiful game and such a smart idea is the fact that there was a side quest that you wouldn't do. If you didn't do it, you'd miss out on one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard in my life. Right? Priscilla's yeah. song. Yeah, Priscilla's song. Never yeah. want to smoke. Whatever it is, you know, like, I can't remember how it goes. I'd sing the whole song for you guys right now if I... Yeah, if uh, I it, has, it has the best side quest in gaming, bar none. It's fantastic. There is not a moment... 
that you can do in Witcher 3 that's not worth your time. Everything that you can do in that game, there's really a, a large benefit to doing it. And yes. man, that, that was one of the coolest things that I took away from The Witcher 3. So, um, yeah. man, I yeah, I agree. Definitely 10 out of 10. Ken, anything? Yeah, that's a great choice. Yep, I love that game. Uh, yeah, I played it on PC. Uh, yeah, loved every minute of my time with it. So, yeah, no argument on that one. <laughs> yep. All right, Ken, what you got? All right, for my next pick, I have Portal 2. Okay. Um, this is a game I have not, not played, but I know I should. Too. Yeah. Yes, you should, and it's not a long game. Have you played the? Did you play the first? Portal? I did. I played the first Portal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Portal um, was a fantastic game, the first one, but it felt like it was just building up to what Portal Two was. Like it was just kind of set the stage of what they could do. Um, mm. Portal Two, it's a great game because it's a first-person shooter that's not a first-person shooter. Like it's a puzzle game. Because you know you have a gun, but all you can do is make portals around and figure out. How and that's to get the one you want to play around. with two people, right? Like you, you want can. to play. No, you do it both. That's okay. another great part of that game. There's a single player run that you can go through it all by yourself, and it's a totally different experience. Game. Okay. Like, wow. Yeah. Well, the the co op game. Uh, there's two different characters of these robots that you um, you play as, and they're you know two buddies, and you each of you pick one. And you play through the game, and it's all the levels are different. It's a totally different game with the co-op oh, mode. So, yeah, because uh, my brother awesome. and I played through it on like the PS3, I think, uh, in co-op. Uh, but yeah, it's a very different experience. Totally different levels, uh, different part of the story, even. Like, yeah, they did a heck of a job on the co-op. Uh, but the single-player game is just a masterpiece. Like every part of that, like all the voices in it are just you know dead on perfect it's got jk simmons he does uh, uh yeah. that's <laughs> my boy fantastic, he's awesome. yep. fantastic job in that it's probably one of my favorite performances of him a ever. new man himself it's, yeah it, it's oh my gosh it, the game's funny and it's like it feels parts of it just feel dangerous and like i don't know it's a cool game and you wouldn't think from a puzzle game it would feel like that but um yeah if you haven't played it go get it yeah i think it's like maybe five bucks on yeah. steam okay <laughs> it's like super cheap um the game yeah, isn't i've heard long. i've heard great yeah. things about portal 2 and it's yeah. definitely something you, i should play so you can beat yeah. it in probably six hours if you're taking your time and okay. probably less than that if you're you know you, <laughs> if you look up the puzzles and stuff how to get through it you probably get through it maybe three i'm not like but, that uh, i need nah, to nah. yeah i'm gonna Go spend the time i'm gonna experience I'm gonna it, it out, yeah yeah, I can't. I can't look up the puzzles in a puzzle game. That'd be weird. <laughs> yeah. no. For some, some people yeah. need to, Andre. I know, I know. Yeah. Some people need the to. The only, the only game I did that on is probably The Witness. If you ever played that, because um, it got to the point where I got so stuck, I was just like, yeah. "Man, I'm, <laughs> I need a help." Few, a few puzzles I understand, but if you're just yeah. like going through a puzzle game with like a wiki, I'm like, "Bro, <laughs> yeah. what are you playing yeah. this game?" <laughs> Don't do that with Portal. Yeah, play it, you know, the right way, and yeah, you'll have a blast. Like you will have a great time with it and it sticks with you and it's a game that I could go back anytime and play through it again. It's like, I, I yeah, love that game. So, and it's, yeah, it's gotten plenty of 10 out of 10s, but it's just like uh, valve. Why don't you give us another one? <laughs> Please. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy that they released half-life Alex. Now, I haven't played mm -hmm. it yet um, because I don't have a PC required VR. I have PS VR, but I don't have a PlayStation yeah. anymore, so that doesn't fucking matter. So uh, I don't have like <laughs> Oculus or something, but man, yeah. it was so amazing for them to make a new Half-Life game and make it as an amazing uh, VR title as one of the best VR titles yeah. that exist right now. Like that's that's awesome. So uh, Valve's doing great thing. I'm sure they will. This is not the last Portal they will make. I'm sure they will make another yeah, Portal. I hope so. so. Yeah. I considered Half-Life Alex because that is a oh my god that that game is it, it and hardly anyone's played it because yeah it's only on vr only on you gotta have like an index or quest i love whatever. it when these game care when these game companies make this these amazing games yeah nobody wanted that right they, like, we've been wanting or, half life three you know, forever like, dude like, like i i just love it when they when they're like we're not gonna put out a vr game we're gonna make an amazing game we're gonna put it on vr we're gonna make an amazing game we're gonna put it on the vita I love it when when companies do that, man. Where they don't half-ass it, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, Alex. Yeah, we should we should talk about Alex sometime. Or but going yeah. to yeah, but going yeah. to your point real yeah. quick. 
Like, you know, nobody wanted this shit. They wanted Half-Life 3. Like, why did you give us Half-Life and it's a VR game? So I thought that's what you were trying to say. But, Mm -hmm. no, but really, uh, it it is an amazing game and it is on VR. And it's like, if you want to play it, you have to have it because that's the experience. And from what I've seen, it is like the best VR experience that exists right now. Far none. Yeah, Yeah, there's no, no contest. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, need an Oculus? Need something? Whatever. Next up for me is God of War 2018. Now, I love this game because it is an example of change, a game that has changed over the years. Right? It is God of War. It is not what it would. I don't remember when the first one came out. What 2003? Maybe something like that. I don't know. It is a yeah. it, it is a game that is it's already had the same namesake. It, it is new and it has changed and it is fantastic. They have kept this they've kept this line of game, this title, this IP running, but changed it yeah. into something completely different than what it was before. And it man, it was amazing. It threw me yeah. for a loop. It, uh, but at the same time, it's really true to. The original series yep. i felt like it didn't feel like it was out of place like it was in place right but yeah like yeah. you said like they flipped it around though and oh man yeah that is a masterpiece they said here's yeah, something they, they you made won't expect an amazing set of games and they made yeah. it better yeah they said like, here's God something you won't expect uh we're gonna go to norse mythology now yeah. nobody saw that coming and nope. that makes me think you know they could go to other mythologies after this Eventually, yeah, I think they have a trilogy plan for this, you know, part of the series. Yeah, but yeah, yeah after that, who knows? But yeah, and and yeah, it tells probably... me that they can, you know. Yeah, and they will. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe the maybe the next trilogy is a stealth game like The Last of Us. You know, I don't know. Maybe he's weaker now, and the gods are just stronger than him, and you have to play it safe. I don't know. This game was fantastic. Blew my mind. Uh, far exceeded my expectations because I was I, I loved the first three, um, but looking back on them now, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm I've matured in my gaming, and the game basically this the God of War 2018 it matured with me, um, and I feel like it was perfect timing, uh, perfect style of gameplay, and perfect story, and I love the the father son story between them, and and I'd played it before I think I even knew I was having a child, you know. But I'm sure for those fathers out there, I can't remember, 2018? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Fathers out there, this was a... I don't know. This really makes me believe in, in, in a father-son relationship. You know what I'm saying? I think you yeah. I think you you uh, you beat that game before you had Probably. the boy. Yeah. yeah. Boy. I think... Boy. But, uh, yeah, it, it is... But it, it taught me how to, how to address him, right? If, you know, yeah. before <laughs> yeah. boy, here, boy. <laughs> I've been using his name or some weird shit like that before. No, no but yeah, this uh, the, the, this game is an example of um, a developer telling you what you need or what you want without you knowing what you want. Because when everybody saw Kratos, we were thinking of a new God of War. We know what that was. We saw God of War 1, 2, 3, and Ascension on the PS3. Everybody likes those games. They are okay. Real quick, they sorry. They were good games, and that was the point I was getting at. So yes. I loved the first three, but I felt like I was like over that, over that type of game. So that was the yeah. point I was trying to say. Like I loved yeah. them, but I I don't want to play them anymore. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, and it's like I know I I would have. I'm pretty sure you would have played a normal God of War game. You might not have been excited as excited, but a next gen God of War. But this is not just a next gen God of War. The camera perspective was different. The combat is different. The story was different. Uh, everything about this game. And it's like nobody was playing God of War 3. And it's like, man, I love this game, but I wish it had like an axe that worked like <laughs> Mirror Mirror works. And like nobody was thinking that. But David Jaffe was like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And it's going to yeah. be awesome. And the, Levi- they- the Leviathan Axe is going to take one, one game to be one of the most iconic video game weapons of all time. Yep. You Absolutely. Said it. It, they took some huge risk with that game. I feel like, like on paper, if like, like somebody told you they're going to make a game that the camera doesn't cut away, I feel like those developers would just lose their shit. It'd be like, are you serious? Like, how the hell are we doing that? One but cut. 
one cut the entire game does not cut away and i can't imagine the amount of like challenges they had to do to make that work because like every game cheats you know they cut away and then the guy's over there or something i mean i don't know like like, being a there's difficulties there but being a 3d artist myself it also helps you get rid of a lot of stuff that the player doesn't have to see so you don't have to make shit that they're not going to see anyway Right, yeah. so it just depends, but there's definitely challenges because it hasn't been done before. But it probably right. also saved them some hassle for making assets that the player would have seen that now they don't have to make. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's a bold choice and something that yeah hasn't been proven, and they made it work and made it work so well that you're yes. like, oh, how could they not have done this? But I imagine in the early stages of that, there were probably a lot of questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can, yeah. Can we really do? Can this? it even be done? Right. <laughs> It's never been done before. Yeah. Can we it's do it? Definitely a, it's definitely a bold take, and it's definitely and, and but it works, and it, it it's not just them showing off. Like it really helps you get connected yeah. with. Kratos. It's the way that it's game like, needs to be played, right? It's just the yeah. way that it needs to be played, and yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, it was perfect for it. So, yeah, Man. absolutely. And that, like have it, like you mentioned having the sun, but that's another thing that that's a big risk because otherwise it sounds like a you know, a quest where you have to like lead yes, somebody right. along and yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah a lot the, of times those are never fun. Those are never yeah. fun. Hey, yeah. Right. Make a game where the entire mission is an escort mission. People will lose right. their minds, but right. that's basically what this game is. You're, yeah. but a trace is not, you know, uh, he's fine. He's, he's never going to get hurt. Yeah. He's never going to get hurt. He doesn't have a health bar. You don't have to worry yeah, about it. He, he actually actively helps. Yeah. He's helpful to the point, to yeah. the point where when you don't have him, you feel his loss yep. in Absolutely. the gameplay, yep. not yep. just in the narrative. You feel it in the, in the gameplay. And that's, that's another example of gameplay and narrative mixing together. There, there's all this talk last generation about Ludo narrative dissonance. Um, uh, or narrative I don't know. Anyway, the point is like where where the gameplay uh, and and the actual story don't mesh well with one another. Like in Uncharted, when yeah. he's murdering, you know, sixty people, but he but in the cutscenes, it doesn't really seem like a guy who murdered sixty people, you know, in, in right. a level or whatever. Um, yeah, it's a little narrative. It helps create a anyway. believable story no matter what you're doing in the game. It's all connected yeah. and it feels right, is what you're saying. But it yeah. it. It, you do feel like you feel the, the 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 nature of the combat with with Kratos and Atreus. You feel and you feel how he helps, and you feel his loss when he's not there. You feel powerful when you go into rage mode and you're just beating people up with your bare fists. You you, you feel the the weight of the Leviathan axe. Yeah, man. Throw, love, yeah, I, man. I throwing love, that, letting that thing lodge into somebody, yeah. and then I'm being just able to, that. to beat up somebody else that. and not feel bad about it. Like, oh, I need my axe. I, was about to say. I gotta the first have my battle. Ask. The first my battle, ask. man. I I pinned question. someone to a tree and went to somebody else, murdered him, took the axe out of the other guy, then no, murdered a third. No suspension of disbelief there. It all oh, felt man. right. Like, it, yeah, you know it. You were strong as, and that's cool. I think that was a part of the tr- the skill tree, if I'm not mistaken. But you could have, uh, you'd be just as strong unarmed as you could being armed. So you it didn't, it wasn't yeah. a hindrance to not have your axe. All right. Anyway, so we've yeah. talked enough. This isn't the round table. I got to keep reminding yeah. you guys because if you want the round table, if you want us to well, talk all about, day about the God of War, then you need to come give us a dollar on Patreon so we can mm. give you what you want. Just like right. whoever they were, Show Santa Monica Studios you gave you what you wanted when you didn't know you wanted God of War 2018. So keep that in mind. You want a round table? You know what you got to do. Patreon.com slash Crown King Media. That being said, what's up next for you, Andre? What's yours? Well, my last one is going to be my favorite in the series. I went back and forth about ready to give this to Metal Gear Solid Five, which has some of the best gameplay in video games, in my opinion. But ultimately, it's solid. it's solid. Ultimately, I went with my favorite in the series, Metal Gear Solid Three: Snake Eater. That's I a, love this wow. game. It's out of time. Uh, I love the camouflage mechanic. I love the uh, nourishment mechanic. I love the stun mechanic. I love air, all the mechanics. <laughs> all the mechanics. Um, I just, I just, I just love the gameplay. But then the story is amazing. I love the boss. One of the best 
characters in gaming. Big Boss? No. I love him too. He's awesome, but I love the boss. The you boss. Know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got it, got you got to put some respect on her name. The, she's one of the yeah, she's one of the greatest villains, one of the greatest heroes, one of the greatest anti heroes, one of the greatest characters in video game history. Uh, some would just call her the greatest. Um, yeah, it, and I love that that ending fight with her. She's basically the the mother of CQC. I love the fact that that, that how she that was basically a fight. how how her ideals shape. Big Boss, and then how his ideals shape the majority of the characters in the Metal Gear Solid universe. Um, and it's just a great, like, story. It's just, like, a great, like, 60s spy thriller with turns and double turns. And, you know, I think it's Hideo Kojima at his best. It was fantastic, yeah. Like, it's a beautiful story, but it's off the wall. And like, there's, I mean, you you give Kojima a spy story and you tell him that people get to defect and be double and triple agents and he's just going to go crazy, man. (laughs) And he did, but it was amazing. It's a perfect Kojima story, in my opinion. Um, Better than Guns of the Patriots, way better than The Phantom Pain. It's just the best. And I think it's... I think it's him at his, at his best, really. Yeah, hands uh, down, I do agree with you. I think that Metal Gear Solid uh, 3 did have the best story. That yeah. was, it was, the, it was the best Metal Gear game, let's, let's be honest. Um, exactly, and it has an amazing soundtrack. It really, it really takes you back there. And the original titular song, Snake Eater, is incredible. And when, if you played that game, you all remember climbing up that ladder for like 50 minutes. And yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind That's of right. amazing. Yeah. Nobody really complained because it was after like a really hectic part, a really hectic battle, and you did kind of need to decompress. It kind of gave you that, and that score, that song kicks in, where it's like a kind of like a James Bond. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, it's kind of funny yeah. how like he mixed these songs had these kind of, in my opinion, this mixture of this. Uh, a James Bond mixed with anime, uh, mixed with other Western cultures, yeah. sound to it, and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you could really say that's what the Metal Gear franchise is. Really, it's like it's it's yeah. it's 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 an Eastern auteur who loves Western media, yeah. making some new stuff, and and it just being uh, off the wall crazy and incredible. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of the most like realistic, not realistic things that ever can come out. Ken, know? what do you think of Metal Gear, man? What do you got? I man, see Metal Gear Three. I, I'm glad you're talking about this because that's one that I had. I had it on the PlayStation Vita, which is probably mm-hmm. not the best way to play that game. And I played it pretty far in, and I lost my save. My save got corrupted, uh, and cool. I never finished it. I never went back because I was just like. Uh, I don't want to start over, <laughs> so I yeah. didn't. But it's been long enough now, and like hearing you talk about it, I'm like, I didn't play that game the right way. Like that needs to be on, you know, a, a main console, like to experience the sound, like you're talking about. Because I'm like having these little, you know, headphones. I don't think I was even on the headphones, just through the little speakers in the Vita. Like that's not the right Doing way to do that. Thing, yeah. <laughs> right. You need to have some surround sound or like right. some audio files in your ears. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. Okay. Yep. So that, that's a good choice. I'm glad you brought it up because that, that makes me really want to go back to it now. <laughs> like Definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah. It really it really was. It was the best. Me- They're all amazing. I've loved every single one of them. Uh, three was the best, uh, in my opinion. Anyway. Yeah. I think five was great. Five, yeah, Phantom Pain really did have... Uh, the, the gameplay of the Phantom Pain is so incredible. The way you can att- att- attack... And that's weapon. years and years of them making these games and finding ways yeah. to perfect yeah. them, but... Uh, it's two generations anyway. later, so, anyway, I mean... I yeah, digress. It, it, yeah. Take the names, man, off the box, why don't you? Goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh, but he put it back. He put it back on every All right. mission. Ken, yeah, yeah. Ken, what do you, Ken, what do you got? All right, my third and final pick of the night... Red Dead Redemption, the okay. first one. Okay. Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I love the series. I like the second one a lot. The second one is awesome, but I feel like it almost was a little too. Bl- I don't want to say bloated, but it just there's so many systems at play in that game. While it was good and it was fun, 
when I play the first one, I just that's a world I just wanted to live in. I, I don't know what it is about that game, but like I didn't mind doing all the little side missions, just riding my horse around, like going hunting, like doing whatever the hell you want. Uh, that game was, was to me, I don't know, one of the best open world games, if not the best, in my opinion. It, it, especially for a genre game like a, a western, a cowboy story, you don't see a lot of those. Like that's, you know, not something that you know people are looking to make new cowboy games, but. Uh, it was done so well, and like even the mini games, like you can go around, play horseshoes, play poker, whatever you want. Fire dice. Yeah, dice. Yeah, all that stuff, and the story of it was awesome throughout, and the ending just it blew me away. Like that was a uh, incredible game, start to finish. Loved it. Um, it's one that, and it's a part of it for me. What makes a ten out of ten is like, would I go back to it? And that's like a hundred percent yes. I would like. <laughs> go right back into that and play through the whole thing again because it's just i felt like it was that good and mm. yeah loved every part of it yeah the music the gameplay even though the gunplay people kind of complain about that a little bit but i didn't mind it the kind of dead eye felt like it's a little cheat where you could slow down time and stuff but it worked um and to me like i was considering like the the grand theft auto games which are all good but i think i enjoyed red dead just more overall like mm. if i had to, if i had to pick one the a world that i want to go back to that i want to live in for a while yeah probably out west yeah well <laughs> you know uh, red dead redemption is basically gta cowboys i think you picked the right space for yourself yeah, yeah. uh the yeah. Game, both of the games one and two amazing huh I'm picking up my pen right here and i'm co-signing that because red dead redemption when it came out i it got it got a lot of tens i i thought it was a perfect game the graphics were incredible. Like this game came out on PS3, so obviously, if you look at Red Dead Redemption Two, it's going to look better. But like yeah. at the time, it's just incredible. It was way better than anything they did with Grand Theft Auto graphically. The sound, like uh, riding your horse. I just remember riding my horse and it and it being at night and it was a thunderstorm. And I was like, this is the best looking game I've ever freaking seen. And it was. It really yeah. the graphics are like legitimately incredible. Mm. Um, it's not a game where you like you go back and like ah oh, I can't believe we thought this looked good. No, it still looks good. Like it's it's a great it up. Yeah. and it does hold up. I love the gameplay, the story. I remember it. You know, like I mean, yeah, it's it's incredible. You know, that over two that's kind of difficult. Two does have some issues. It it is a it is a very long game. Whether yeah. you think that's bloat or whether you love it, that's one thing. But nobody can deny that, that game takes a long time to beat. Yeah. It is, it is definitely, you know, and it it has some problem. It has some issues, I'll say, where um, to make things more realistic, they made them kind of slower and more cumbersome. Yep. And Red Dead Redemption One does not have that issue, and I think that um, you know. I, I, it, it does make Red Dead Redemption Two more realistic, but it might make Red Dead Redemption One more fun. Yeah, um, yeah, both. But but still, Red Dead Redemption Two is fun, and Red Dead Redemption One is realistic. So it's like yeah. you know, it is immersive. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I I agree with you one hundred percent. John Marston and and his and oh, his yeah. epic. And the crazy thing is, I'm not a Western guy. I, I, no, I, and and like and yeah, I guess you're not either, right? Me neither. But, no, not at all. Like that game, kind of. I it made me a Western a guy. Yeah, it made me a Western guy. I, I don't hate it. westerns, but like no. I won't. I don't. Oh, I want to go out and see a western. Oh, I I can't wait no. to watch this western TV show. Like, but like those two games are probably my favorite bit of western media mm, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, like you make a. I'm telling you, man, you make a good game. The setting matters, but like it, if you make a good game, they will come. You know. All right. Last but not least, the very the number ten of tens, one I'm sure all three of us can agree on. Drum roll, please. For Bloodborne uh, two. No. Anyway, <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn. This is an example. Oh, yeah. We talked about God of War 2018, which was an example of recreating a franchise. Horizon Zero Dawn is an example of creating a new IP. An amazing new place to play and understand and love. 
And this one does not let up. It's beautiful. It's crazy. It's amazing. Horizon Zero Dawn is what we can have if, if you guys want good stuff. You want good stuff? Buy a PlayStation. Even if you can't get one, just buy it anyway. And tell them you want exclusives. And this is what you're going to get. Yeah. Shit like this. Yeah. Brilliant minds. Come up with new stuff. Sending six six one hundred dollar bills or how, however many five one hundred dollar bills to like Sony headquarters and just seeing <laughs> if like in a few weeks you get a PS five. Hand it over. Now, I don't know. I probably I probably <laughs> yeah. given Sony like uh, like ten thousand dollars of my money so far. Maybe oh, I don't know. Easy. Yeah. easy. So, I don't know. Anyway, Horizon Zero yeah. Dawn, amazing. The gameplay, amazing. Story, amazing. Aesthetic amazing, uh, fucking general uh, uniqueness amazing. I mean, what do you guys think of this? We got we got to move. Yeah, but it's it, very, very uh, impressed with Guerrilla Games after they made Killzone and and, and Killzone Shadow. Did not expect PS4, this, right? right? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, no. no. didn't see this it, shit it coming. Looked, it looked good from the very first like um, trailer we got at E3. Uh, I was in, you know. I love Aloy as a character. I really just do. Um, I, 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 I love the fact that we start with her as a child and we see her grow up. And, you know, I, I love the fact that, you know, as the story goes on, you're like, man, Aloy's special. She's smart. She's, she, she's so good at everything. And then you start, you realize why as the story goes on, um, that is the case. She, she is literally engineered to be special. Um, and I love her personality, her voice actor. Um, I love uh, my boy Lance Reddick, Riddick, uh, as the uh, the kind of Silas, I think his name is. He's, yep. a, Silas, he's in that yeah. game. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, think, I love uh, the gameplay. Man, the mechanics of the weakness system. Yeah. Um, that's not generally apparent, but you figure it out. And then you have these different arrow types, different ways. But it, the, you learn... On your own, how to kill these things better? You get better yeah. at killing them, and they don't change. And everybody they don't get has stronger. a different way to do it. They just, yeah, yeah man, brilliant game. So, Horizon yeah, Zero Dawn. And, and it's yeah. not like, like you said, it's not like Aloy herself gets stat bonuses or anything. She gets more powerful weapons or whatever. But really, you're getting better. Your tactics are getting better, and you're getting, you're understanding how you like to take down certain dinosaurs, and that might be different from how someone else likes to take yeah. it. You know. There are some weapons I barely use that I'm sure you use them. Right. Lot, you know? And traps because... I didn't use that I could have used. And yeah. Someone maybe used more of, you know. Fantastic game, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can't wait to say, see. When I first saw that trailer, though, I was just like, what the hell is this? Like, the robot dinosaur thing, I was just like, was where is this it. coming from? Where are they going with this? But then, I, yeah, I played it. I, I, that was a game I bought, you know, day one because it, it did look so good. But it, it still blew me away. My expectations were just completely blown away and that was a game i used to tell people to get a ps4 like yeah. there's any on the fence like oh should i get one i was like yes because of this game you need to have it <laughs> welcome to jurassic <laughs> round mods <laughs> uh, moving on just a reminder if everyone is enjoying the show you can head over to patreon.com slash crown king media and support us for just a dollar a month which gets you a patreon exclusive show dubbed the round table where we pick a game to discuss in great detail while also providing our insight into what can make it much better or far worse kind of like this episode we just did 10 mini versions of it so if you like that shit come on over we'll give you a full one a whole long one about one of them and you'll you'll and you can give us your suggestions on what game you also for all of our audio only listeners out there i know there's a lot of you uh we do have youtube content where the show is uploaded with our ugly mugs so if you'd like to see us step on by take a look and then never do so again uh, also we have another segment called the observatory where we pick a game and play it for a while and have some fun so come check that out okay it's time to talk about some industry news god of war ragnarok has been delayed until 2022 and has also been confirmed for ps4 as well as the ps5 first post states the release of god of war ragnarok the sequel to the renowned action adventure god of war game has been postponed until 2022 the news about the delay was confirmed by the game's developer santa monica studio meanwhile the playstation studios head herman holst cited the ongoing pandemic as a reason for the delay and also revealed that the game will be coming to playstation 4 and playstation 5. later in a tweet santa monica confirmed the release has been pushed to next year 
Despite the delay, Holst promises gamers that they will not be disappointed as the sequel is of an extremely high quality. He highlighted the importance of shipping extremely high quality games without pushing the studio's teams to the breaking point. What do you guys make of this? Two different would, pieces of news here. Yeah. Yeah. But I, oh, first on the, the game being delayed, is anybody surprised by that? Because I. Oh, when they said. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's two different pieces of news. One is absolutely not surprising at all. I, it's barely even a delay. I guess it's a delay because they did say 2021, but everybody was like, really? Okay. <laughs> no. You're coming out in 2021. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yep. I'll hold my breath. But the bigger piece of news, or I mean, I guess that's big. The more surprising to me, and it sounds like to you as well, uh, is that this game is also coming out on PS4, and that opens up a huge discussion. Is this about... the new Cyberpunk 2077? No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that is a, a worry, but I, I there. It's not one I there's, think we have to there's worry about. There's two camps. There really are. There's there's the there's the people that only want this game to come out on PS5 so that it fully is the best it yeah, can be. Fully. It's not being held back by the PS4 Pro and the PS4. We got to remember it. It's this has to come out on hardware that came out like I don't know 8 years ago yeah. or whatever. Um and there's other people that are like, "Hey, the PS4 has way more systems out." It's not like Horizon's in the same boat. We already knew that. Horizon is more understandable because it started development on the PS4. And so we understand that. And Horizon, we haven't seen God of War, Ragnarok, or Horizon um, Forbidden West looks amazing. And we are we you just talked about how good Horizon Zero Dawn is for the PS4. So a lot of people are like, why are you why are you worried? when these games are sequels to games that already look amazing, yeah, it's just going to look better on the PS5. It's a valid point, yeah. It's just, it's, no, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, I understand Sony not wanting to hold, not wanting to just abandon their PS4 people, but this is a, this is a, it, it does need to be said that this is not common, that Sony does not do this, that the PS4 their first party PS4 games were not on PS3 when they came out. Infamous Second Son was not on PS3. Killzone Shadowfall was not on PS3. You know, the, these early PS4 games were not backwards compatible or, or rather were not um, released on the older system. And there are more PS5. A lot of people say, well, it's hard to get a PS5. So it's nice that there, were, there are more PS5s out right now than this time. Five or so months later, six months later, seven, um, then there were PS4s. So it's not an issue of there not being enough PS5s. Yeah. And real quick, to interject if I can. Uh, Interjection. Interjection. There, <laughs> this is funny because it's, it's coinciding with what you're saying, but it's a different console. There is a shitload of Wii U games that nobody played, but all of a sudden, now that they're on Switch, no one even knows and no one's complaining. And they're buying them and enjoying them. So it's the right. same kind of deal, yeah. right? Yeah. Good point. Yeah, well, makes sense. I, I, th I think the reason for that is it's really more of a technical reason. Because, like, the PS3, like you're saying, they didn't port those games. Well, the architecture of that system was vastly different. It ran on the cell processor. And to... To release a game on PS3 and, and PS4, yeah, yeah, that would have been a ton of work. It would require a ton of resources to do that. It would have need like separate teams to develop that. But between PS4, and PS5, the architecture is pretty similar. I mean, PS5 has got the solid state drive and stuff, but I don't think it's that different that it requires a complete rework of the game. Right. Yeah. That is a, that is a, a, a an exceedingly good point. I don't think. I'm just going to like repeat what you said because I want people to understand how right you are. The cell processor was notoriously difficult to work for, to, mm -hmm. to not to work for, but to develop for. Um, and that's why uh, really third party games looked better on the 360 for a long time until even third party yeah. guys started to, uh, um, you know, know how to use it. And it was difficult even for first party. And so, yeah, developing a game for both the PS4 and the PS3 would be very, very difficult. So that's a very good point. 
Yeah. And to, to me, that's why it makes sense. And yeah, the other point is that there are so many PS4s out in the wild. Yeah, yeah that's money. Why leave money on the table? So yeah. okay. another yeah, reason I think that people don't talk <laughs> about is, and I know it's going to sound like I'm talking on both sides of my mouth here, because I'm I, I kind of am, but um, when people bring up like I just did, um, uh, infamous. And when they bring up Killzone Shadowfall, these are nice games. They are very good games. But they are not in the same class as God of War and Horizon have put themselves in. They expect to sell 10 million units easy with Horizon. And they expect to sell 10 million units easy with God of War. These are much bigger franchises. So I understand if Sony wants to put them in both pools with ps4 and ps5 and to be honest the people and look i would rather the game personally i would rather the game especially ragnarok because it's coming out later i would rather it be on the ps5 only because there's no way you can convince me look i know it's going to be better on the ps5 i know it's going to have a higher frame rate ray tracing probably the graphics are going to look amazing 4K, 60 frames. I, I understand all that. And the loading will be better. I understand all that. But you cannot use the SSD to its fullest when you have to put it on a system with no SSD. You just can't. It'll look amazing. It'll look way better than the uh, uh, previous game did. I understand that. And it, I'm sure it'll look better than the previous game did on the PS4 um, just because it's it's a sequel. They have more you know, know-how. But I would rather that game just be on the PS5. But here's the thing. People like me who would rather it be on the PS5 and even people not not like me who are upset, who are very angry that it's also on the PS4 are going to buy it anyway. So Sony is not losing your money. And if you're listening to me and you're saying I'm boycotting that game, but you also enjoyed God of War PS4, and you have a PS5, I'm telling you right now, I don't believe you. Nope. <laughs> you're lying to yourself. Not for a second. Nope. And you are lying to nope. me. Nope. All right? You can lie to me all you want. Don't lie to yourself. All Excellent right? Excellent point. Excellent point. You are buying that game as am I. Everyone's buying. I'm buying that game. You're buying that game. He's buying that game. Everyone's buying that game. Next up, Ratchet and Clank's buying that game. And uh, they're rifting apart. Day one patch will add a performance RT mode that will allow the game to run at 60 frames per second with ray chasing enabled. According to IGN, revealed by Insomniac Games, the performance mode and performance RT modes will both be available to all players who update Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart when it's released on PS5 on June 11th, 2021. This is another example of Insomniac Games giving players a best of both worlds options and follows the performance RT mode being added to both Marvel Spider-Man's Miles Morales and and Marvel Spider-Man Remastered on PS5. Speaking of options, Insomniac has also added an extensive list of accessibility features to Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which includes the ability to adjust fire modes, aim mode, and auto aim, various contrast options, adjusting motion, blur, screen shake, and much, much more. What you think? I mean, I was already buying it, so it doesn't. It didn't change my mind. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, cool, more people great. can buy it. That, that's I, gravy. I like man. it. It's yeah. All the gravy. yeah, that's gravy on it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we we talked about this a while ago. Um, the sacrifice, and you know, I'm sure Digital Foundry and all these other people will do breakdowns of the differences of these three modes. There's performance mode, fidelity mode, and now the best of both worlds ray tracing, 60 frames per second mode. Um, but the ray tracing 60 frames per second will probably be at 1080p. And the difference between not having ray tracing, or let me restart, the difference between having uh, ray tracing at 30 and having um, ray tracing at 60 but no 4K, it's just, it, to me, I'd rather have my game at 1080p keep the ray tracing on, keep 60 frames per second, and that's what this is doing. The 4K, the jump from 1080p to 4K, full 4K, probably will not be worth turning down the frame rate or turning off ray tracing. Mm. So that's why this is amazing. They did it. 
later with Spider Man, and now they're doing or Miles Morales, and now they're doing it um, day and date when the game arrives. So it's it's great to have these options. Um, this is a this is this is a game one of three now that is PS5 exclusive. This is a game that's going to take full advantage of the SSD. So it kind of comes on the on the backs of what we were talking about. And this is um I believe there are three major games: Demon Souls, Returnal, and now Ratchet and Clank that are only on PS5. And so you do kind of have your PS5 on it. You have kind of have games that are only for the PS5 and that take full advantage of the SSD. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like I said, like you said, Ken, this game's amazing. Yeah. Looks great. I was already going to buy it. They just keep making yeah. it better. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. So, yeah. I'm loving that. Uh, it's going to be good for everyone however they want to play it, right? This is a game that everyone can play, literally. If you're blind, yeah. you can play it. So, yeah. you play this it, game. It, it, I do like the fact that, look, we all know Demon's Souls is a hard freaking game. I can tell you right now, Returnal is a hard freaking game. And so, um, this being the, the third PS5 only game and it being more accessible, um, and I don't just mean the accessibility options, uh, which are amazing. Anytime developers, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, I love it when developers give uh, more, uh, more ways for more people to play their game. Um, that usually, you know, or, or in the past haven't really been able to or, or been very difficult yeah. uh, to play games. Uh, I love that. Um, it, it, it really is important. Um, but yeah, this being a, a more kid-friendly game, a more, you know, adults obviously will also play it. This being a more accessible game to more people um, and not being hard as hell. Um, I think that's uh, good. I think it's good to have that in the por- portfolio. I think everyone needs that. Everyone needs this kind of game in their life. Yeah. 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 I'd yeah. play Spyro 4 if they came out with it. I'd buy that immediately. You know? Just fun. Playing a game. Going around. Mm-hmm. Searching for stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Burning up some sheep. All right. Next yeah. up. E3 predictions. We need to know what you think. What's going to go on this Saturday at E3? Do you have any predictions? Any thoughts? Any comments or concerns? What do you guys got? Well, I, I can kind of like lightning round through it because <laughs> I got yeah. a few. Yeah, but I know uh, Sony's not there in any official capacity. So whatever they do is kind of on their own. So they're kind of separate from the thing. Mm. Um, Nintendo, they do their direct where it's all pre-recorded and they just kind of dump it out at everybody. Um, the the rumors right now on the Switch Pro are like constant. Like people are just saying these thing, this thing's real. It's coming out. Nintendo keeps denying it. I think if it comes out, it's going to be a moderately upgraded Switch that's like, you know, might run at a higher resolution, have a better battery, better kickstand. <laughs> I'm not expecting, like... Yeah, if I didn't know, have a Switch already, then I'd probably yeah. buy that one. Right. right. I heard it yeah. won't be a handheld. I heard, I heard it It has to be done. Oh, really? Yeah. That, maybe. I mean, that, yeah. That's That would be kind of cool, because uh, I don't really use mine in handheld too much, so... Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think Metroid 4, I don't think we're going to see gameplay, but we might see, like, they'll tease it, something. You know, maybe have a, no, a teaser No, I, I, actually, I actually wrote this down, and I was going to yeah. say, and I feel it in my gut this year, we're finally getting some Metroid Prime 4 gameplay. No bars, no holds. They're going to play the whole game in front of us <laughs> right now. You're going to get it all. Yeah. I so, love it. Yeah. I love that. I, I don't think true. they're going to even tease it, man. <laughs> I, I don't think... As much as I would want to see Metroid Prime 4, we ain't seeing shit. What was it, three years ago? Three years ago, I predicted. I was like, this is the one. I think it was, I can't remember what. But I was like, I said it to Andre. I was like, they're going to say Metroid Prime 4 this year. I was like, and it's not going to be fucking gameplay. It's not going to be a trailer. It's just going to be a title. And what sure is fucking shit, that's exactly what it was. And I've been waiting for Metroid Prime 4 footage, anything ever since. I don't think it's this year. Okay. Um, I hope. I hope. Uh that's my gut feeling, though. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna see yeah. it. So yeah. Well, we'll for see. Microsoft, I think they're gonna show Halo Infinite like real gameplay, and I think they'll announce a beta. And like, I don't know if it'll be like available now, but I think it'd be pretty soon. I think they want people in the beta for that game, and I think you might see that because that'll get people really excited about Xbox. And they already hit the delay with Halo, so I, I hope they can do that. If they could, I think that would be huge. If they could. You know, come out 
of the gate and say, hey, here's Halo Infinite, and hey, you get to try it out. Because yeah. people have already been waiting a year, you know, extra. So I, that's my hope for them. Yeah. Uh, it's a bad it's idea. A for, for Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they're having a joint press conference with Bethesda. I don't know why they call it joint. Like, they own Bethesda. They're the same company, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, um, yeah, they're just like a developer that's under Microsoft's umbrella now. But um, I, I imagine Bethesda had their own plans, and so they want to keep doing that. But, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, really, Bethesda's press conferences, except for the first one, have been weak. They just don't have that many uh, library, that, that big of a library to justify. So I think, you know, you come out with a little bit of Starfield information or maybe some gameplay or picture or something. I don't know. I think that'll be uh, incredible. I think that'll be enough. Um, obviously, their Elder Scrolls 4 is way far in, in advance, um, but, you know, some of their smaller, you know, Evil Within or something, some of the smaller IP they could do something with. Um, but, yeah, I, th- I think we'll see something from Starfield. This is a big thing from, from Microsoft. There's a lot of rumors, uh, a big E3 for Microsoft. There's a lot of rumors that, that they will announce the acquisition of another game studio, uh, another established game studio, Um you know, there's all these rumors with Hideo Kojima. Is he going to be in Microsoft? Mm-hmm. He's going to do something else for Sony. There's all of these rumors there. And um, I want to say Sony will not be there in any official capacity, yeah. like we've said, but Square Enix will be there. Yep. And Square Enix and Sony have been like this. Square Enix mm-hmm. is going to have their own thing. We've already talked about the rumored PS4 exclusive game. That may or may not be a Dark Souls style remake of Final Fantasy One, or mm-hmm. not remake, but a Dark Souls style game in Final Fantasy One's universe. We talked about that. Uh, that'll be in there. Um, I expect to see more from Final Fantasy Sixteen, which I am incredibly excited about, which is a console exclusive for yeah. the PS Five. So um, while Sony might not be there. They'll be there in spirit. You know, a lot of third-party games. Ha- or, They're or, mostly there, is what you're saying. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Deathloop. That's a Bethesda game that is uh, console exclusive to Sony. So, like, is that going to be... I don't, think, I don't think they'll show Deathloop. I think they've shown enough. I don't think they're going to beat a dead yeah. horse. I don't. That would just be weird, yeah. right? To have, I don't to think, have I think they'd be Deathloop. smart not yeah. to show any... De- I don't think we're going to see Deathloop, and we shouldn't. So, yeah. um, if we do... They've already shown. T- wait, we we've seen enough. If, yeah. if if they do, it's going to be dumb on their part. So I don't think we're going to see death. And it's it's it's, yeah. it's been delayed already. I think they're I think they're just working right now. They don't need to make a vertical slice. Yeah. Really. it'll come. Yeah. You guys are excited. We're getting it to you as fast yeah. as we can. That's it. Um, for me, um, real quick, uh, I I'll run through stuff. You guys comment as you will. We already talked about Metroid Prime Four. Um, I was I'm hope I had an I, you know, I had a feeling I'm like you know what it's been a while. And they've had the whole uh, COVID opportunity to really grind some, you know, get get the work in. And, you know, this would be a great, this would be, Ken, this would be the time. If you had some shit to show about Metroid Prime 4, this is yeah. it. This is when you do it. I don't think we're, and, and sadly, I don't think we're going to get it. But anyway, I really want to see some stuff. And I think we probably, I have a little itch that we might on Elden Ring. Um, uh, an, a game I've been really excited about, uh, George R. R. Martin's working with uh, FromSoft to make a Dark Souls style Game of Thrones game. Uh, I really think it, it, it's going to be awesome, and we haven't seen enough. I don't know enough about it, and it's just a title. You, you put both of those things together, I'm super excited. So I, yeah. I, I have a feeling that we'll see a little bit more. Uh, we might, might not. That's kind of where I'm at. We might, we might not. But if we do, unfortunately, I have a feeling we won't. Yeah. I'm kind. Of, I'm in the middle, so I would love to. Do I think we're going to? It's really heavy, heavy possibility. So uh, I'd love to see that. I'd also love to see more on the Callisto Protocol. We talked about that earlier. The new Dead Space successor. I would love to see, man. And I have a good feeling that we're going to see something about that. Actually, I have a really good, strong feeling. So we'll see. Uh, but I have a feeling we're going to see something on Callisto Protocol uh, 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 for E3 Saturday. Um, and then, uh, you know, I definitely feel like we're going to see some Horizon. I think we're going to see some Horizon something. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah, I think Sony might do a state of play after E3. 
Is Gorilla uh, not coming? Like, is are, are they just going to... So we probably won't see it because Sony's not going to be there. Yeah. Or is this one of those situations where a Gorilla might sh- show up? Yeah, I don't think there'll be at E3 yeah. and E3... Because it's an exclusive. Stuff. It's a Sony... It's a yeah, exclu- yeah. Okay, makes sense. So they won't, but I do think there'll be a state of... I mean, so Horizon just had a state of play. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't, we saw I didn't see it then. I don't know. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Let me give a tip of the crown right quick. Go, okay. go watch that. It's freaking amazing. On it. Um, on it. Yeah, there are some new... Don't tell me. I'll watch it. I'll watch we'll it. Watch yeah. it after the, we'll watch it together. That? that sounds good. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, so they just did that. I, I do think they'll, they'll have... Um, so they're releasing Ratchet and Clank next week i believe or maybe the week yeah. after it's very it's very soon it's coming friday. out this week yeah 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 friday yeah. yep oh man oh well i know something's gonna get preloaded tonight <laughs> yeah. um uh but and the preload is available um i did see that so it, yeah it's coming friday um so you know uh, i i think after rats and clank they'll kind of start to the they'll give a like a state of play this month after e3 about some of their yeah, projects later on. Okay. Um, I was thinking that even because Sony wasn't there, but you, you're right. Thinking more about it, it is an exclusive. Um, let at me least, ask, at least for now. You let know. me ask uh, Ken and David, you you Nintendo people. You think we'll see Breath of the Wild two? Oh, and follow up question. Yeah, I think so. Breath of the had, Wild mean? I had it written down for, for Zelda. I think they'll show the title. They'll have they'll have like the new title of it. And that'll probably be uh, it. <laughs> but I feel like we've already seen that, and we've even seen a short trailer for Breath of the Wild too. I thought we did. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we'll see more than that. Gameplay. I think we'll show. Okay, I, I that's a good so. point. And I, and I wasn't yeah. thinking about that. I do think that this is the yeah. I think we'll see some something Breath of the Wild too. A little bit of gameplay. Yeah. With something. Nintendo, I hate to get my hopes up. Every time I get my hopes up, though, they, they disappoint. Let you down. Yeah. If I set my expectations really low. Then when but it comes out, I'll be so I agree. excited. And I don't disagree because it's been a while. There's these titles I've been screaming about. Give me more. I want Luigi's Mansion. Okay, they finally gave it to me. Anyway, yep. um, this is their bread and butter. And they th- people know it's coming. And they don't have to do yeah. much to make it. It's already there. Yep. They already have the models. They have. The they engine, just need to make yeah. a few new ones. You know? So it's, it's their bread and butter. They're going to show it off. I think we're going to see some... Uh, Breath of the Wild too something it might not be long but we'll see something definitely for sure I agree yep cool. all right well we want to give as a collective because I'm not sure if you guys heard about this but we want to give a tip of the crown to the uh, Among Us chicken nugget that sold on eBay for nearly a hundred thousand dollars now that oh is in, that is in <laughs> sus in the least what do you guys you guys hear about that uh, I did hear nugget. about that. Who well, um, buys a chicken I, nugget? I saw the chicken. Well, people who are hungry can, usually. But I you can probably buy a two hundred thousand chicken nuggets. Nope. You can probably buy a million chicken nuggets for a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Uh, uh, who is this punk and why is he flaunting his money off? Anyway. Yeah, uh, I saw it. It does look like an Among Us character. It, it, it looks like something I might spend five. It looks like it has an oval shape with a couple of. Things protruding out the bottom. Yeah, yeah, it totally an Among Us character. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. super. Dude, if I if I knew that so, there was somebody in the market for like an Among Us character, I'm like, I'm gonna nuggets, start looking hard at my chicken nuggets, it. right? I would have made it. I'm gonna. St- I don't know how to. Make, I would have. I would have hey. figured out how to make chicken nuggets. I would have shaped it. I would be like, probably, hey, look, I got this. I got this from McDonald's. Can you believe it? That's probably what this person did. Anyway, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, goodness. Like, like soccer moms do that crap all the time. Like they just like make. Oh, this looks like a dinosaur for little Timmy. Somebody found a, a McDonald's character. <laughs> like oh, it looks it kind of it, a McDonald's chicken nugget. Oh, it kind of looks like a monger. That's weird. And somebody's like, I'll pay a hundred thousand dollars for that. Like what? Yeah, it's <laughs> man, that's crazy. Yeah, like even like I was in the grocery store today and there was chicken nuggets and they're dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets and those are more fucking articulate than this hundred thousand dollar worth Among Us oh, shaped man, crazy, chicken man. nugget. It blows my mind. And it was probably one of the, they probably bought one of those dinosaur packs. And they're like, oh, this didn't come out the way it's supposed to, but it kind of looks like an Among Us character. I bet I could get a mil- like a million dollars on the game. The game on itself eBay. is free. What are we doing? Oh my god. Anyway, uh, tip of the crown. Uh, 
Congratulations. I'm, a, I'm, I'm really happy, man. Huh? How much do you think that guy would pay if I made him, if I put a plate and I made him uh, like two sunny side eggs and bacon, but the bacon is shaped in a smile? <laughs> can, I get, can I get a couple of cheese for that? Like, what do you think? No, unfortunately, <laughs> that's been done before. I think the people that buy these things are like buying chicken nuggets that have never been seen before. So I oh, think, okay. I think if you maybe had a Metroid Prime 4 shaped chicken nugget, yeah. you, you'd probably be rich right now. Let's spell this guy's yeah. name with some alphabet cereal. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that worth? That, man, for me, it'd be worth yeah. the world, man. Anyway. The new releases for next week. If you care to know about the games you need to get or don't need to get, we don't know. We're just going to tell you. A lot of them, we don't even know what the fuck they are, but I'm going to tell them to you anyway. And we'll see. I'm going to go through this list pretty quick. You guys stop me if there's something you want to say about it, right? All right. Chivalry 2, PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, June 8th. Edge of Eternity, PC. Oh, uh, let me stop you right there. Yeah, I haven't looked at some Chivalry 2. Um, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I think I might, I might keep an eye on this one. It, the 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 gameplay looks good. I like I like the fighting. You know, I really did enjoy For Honor. Uh, you know, me and you. What is it like For Honor? Man. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, it's it's like first person. It's also third person, but it, it's like medieval style battles. They're big battles. But um, is it as tight as For Honor, or does it look a little janky? I haven't played it, but a lot of people like chivalry. That's why I'm saying I'm keeping my eye on it. David. I'll okay. You know I mean? Well, now that you've mentioned it, I will take a look. Chivalry 2, you guys just got a chance. Thank Andre for that. Edge of Eternity PC, June 8th. Anyone? Anyone? The Elder Scrolls Online is coming to consoles, apparently. PS5 and Xbox Series X, June 8th. I know a lot of people like this game. It's an MMO. If you like MMOs and you like... Interesting. Uh, Another... Real quick, another, that's a Bethesda game currently on a Sony console coming to another Sony console. Yep. Keep an eye on these things. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood DLC, DLC for the online stuff. It's coming to consoles uh, June 8th. Look at Willie Morgan and the Curse of Bone Town. I don't know this one either, but June 8th. I'm sorry, did you say Willie Morgan and the Curse of Bone Town? Yeah, I sure did. Oh. That is correct. Wow. Green Hell is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. It's no, it's no Cyberpunk 2077, people, but it's coming to the consoles you know and love June 9th. Then we got later daters, Xbox Series X, Xbox on One, June 9th. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, PS5. Is that like a... Yeah. Tell me it's about a this. PS5 oh, that, that's version. Uh, okay. Yeah. PS5 so it's version. Like, it's just looking a yeah. little better, running a little better. Okay. Yeah, and I believe it. They fixed the door, I believe the infamous door. <laughs> well, the, the door, the door from the freaking sixteen bit era. <laughs> and well, I believe it's coming with the uh, the Yuffie DLC. Okay. So scoop that up. It's like the definitive I'm, edition, definitive man. edition, right? <laughs> Goodness. Hey, well, seven was great. We loved the remake. If you haven't played it, check it out. Uh, especially on your PS5 that you have and I don't. Uh, Ninja Gaiden Master Edition is coming to Switch June 10th. That's cool. Uh, I have to look a little more into that. Ninja Gaiden is pretty dope. I don't know what Master Edition is, but uh, it may, might be cool. One hand clapping. Can you even? Can you? Can you? Can you, can you do that? Yeah. Is that even yeah, a fish? You can clap with one hand. <laughs> yeah. it's like one. Sure. That's one hand, <laughs> one arm clapping, bro. That doesn't count. Still using something anyway. That's coming June just 10th. Have, to have large hands and high. We dexterity. are football is coming to PC June 10th. Have you? Do you I mean, you know football. You are football, Henri. Do you know what we are? Like football? Soccer. Football. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably soccer. Not important. Yeah. Moving on. Not even correct. Black Skylands is coming to PC June 11th. Uh, don't take a look because you won't see. Dar Darius Burst, another Chronicle EX Plus PS4 Switch June 11th. Another Chronicle? Yeah, I don't know. Another Chronicle. Oh. It's another one. There's more than one now. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive. This is the fighting game. This is the new... It looked pretty good. Have you looked any more into this fighting game guy on our team here, Henri? Do you know anything about Guilty uh, Gear? Uh, no, I, Strive. I know it's I know it's a long-running fighting game series. I've never played it. You're not interested in even checking it out? No. No? I have, I have a lot. I have, I have like... 
my fighting game list that I play and the fighting game list that like other people play, like it, it, the ratio is already out of whack. I already play way right. more. Guilty, games guilty gear extrive that's coming out June eleventh. Ratchet and Clank, a rift apart. Rifting me apart because I can't buy it, but it's coming there June 11th, Real quick, Friday. Get uh, it. Uh, Insomniac uh, released the the size of this game on the PS5, and it's like 33, 34 gigs. So the, these games are actually becoming smaller because of how they're able to make oh. them with the, with the SSD and all yeah. that other technology. Mark Cerny said awesome. that would happen. Yeah, because they well, don't have I, to repeat I'll tell you data. one thing. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. When Mark Cerny says something... You believe Mark Cerny because Mark Cerny is a video game god. Okay. So you believe okay. what he says. So he's yeah. the architect, man. He he, he is. <laughs> he's literally the architect. Right. Okay, well believe that I'm that guy and I'm telling you we need to move on. We need to get the fuck out of here. We're almost out of time, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So Rush and Clank, get that shit. So on Steam this week. We got some sales. No Man's Sky. We talked about that earlier. It's 50% off right now. Amazing game. It It wasn't when it launched. It's fantastic now. (laughs) So check it out. No Man's Sky. It's great. It's half off. Now This is when I should have bought it. You're lucky. Yeah. So get it now. Ark Survival Evolved is 80% off. I think it's like nine bucks right now. Uh, Onran and I played a shitload of Ark. We love Ark. It's great. If you haven't played it and you're interested in this kind of thing, check it out. $10. Can't beat that. All right. Epic Store. This game, Frostpunk, is free. I saw this, didn't know really what it was, and I looked into it a a while ago, and it looked pretty interesting to me, and I didn't want to buy it, but now it's free, so now I'm going to play it. And it it, it looks great. It looks like a, um, what do you call it, like a a Sims kind of thing, Um, but with uh, darker repercussions and more... uh, more of a need to actually create things for them, uh, food-wise, and you know, really maintain your society. So, uh, looks pretty cool. Check it out. And on the Switch, Rayman Legends is on sale. That's a really cool game if you haven't played Rayman Legends, as Thank well you. as yeah, the two South Park games, The Stick of Truth and Fractured Butthole. So, those are great. If you haven't played them yet, they're pretty cheap. Now's a good time to go check them out. PlayStation Honor, what do you got? Uh, so the days of play uh, continues. They just so just roll it along. Uh, it takes two. 25% off. Used to be $40. Oh, is get now it. $30. I hear nothing but amazing things. Check, nothing get that but shit. Great things. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, another game I know you like, David. Cuphead. Oh, you beat that yeah, game, really. right? Uh, yep, yep. Cuphead. 25% great. off. How much you was 20. It is now 15 So, I, you know, I, I know <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't release on the PS4. So, hey, now you can get it. 25% off. $15. Pretty good. Um... Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. You know, uh, I, I'm i a Naruto fan. I, I was not looking forward to this game because I like the Storm series. It's a fighting game series. It's very good. Uh, but this is different. It's a different type of game. Uh, but this is 85% off. Uh, so $60 turns to 9 So, you know, if you're a little interested in this, you know, and it's a popular anime, so therefore... Probably a popular game unless people play it. They like eighty five percent off. And finally, CTR Crash Team Racing. For those of you that don't know, it's sixty percent off. That was forty dollars. It's now sixteen dollars. That is interesting. That's a that's a yeah. good value for uh, for that game. I know a lot of people think Crash Team Racing was the best of the early kart racers. Personally, I'm a Diddy Kong Racing guy. <laughs> You know, yeah. on the N64. I love that game, and I love the arena combat mm. uh, mode in that game. But I am done. Back to you, David. <laughs> All right, well, that about sums it up for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed, or even if you hated it, please like, share, and subscribe. And for God's sake, tell all of your friends while you're at it. Um, don't forget. Don't you forget. Let us know who was most right between the three of us. We may be crowned king, but everyone's royalty here. here. You know, funny story. I was working at a bar one year, and, you know, Andre, you worked near me. I'm not going to mention the place, but, uh, you know, this guy, he was a very young guy. He just turned 21, and he left with a a lady, a very old lady. You know, she looked very, very old. And, you know, uh, he came back an hour or two later to the bar, and, and he came up to me at the stand, and and he's like, that lady, 
That lady top notch! 10 out of 10!